I'm back. I did squeeze a couple in. I didn't even know you went anywhere. Mm. Didn't realize. I was still in the room, but I just wasn't listening to you two. <laughs> that way, I might stay awake longer. <laughs> 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 okay let me make sure i'm situated here completely oh you left an arm in another room or something <laughs> maybe a leg in the bathroom now there's there's a little bit going on here let's see. oh slaps let me open up slaps one two one two <laughs> One, two, one, two, testing, testing, one, two, three, twelve, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, six, seventeen, eighteen, ninety, twenty. Right, that's those prayers. What have we got here? Open that up. Activities. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, interesting. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do you guys uh do you guys remember the uh the car the Yugo? No, no. You don't remember? Yeah, yeah Yugoslavian, wasn't it? Or something. Yeah, I think it was, it was. Yugoslavian, very, very, oh. very kind of like tiny compact car would be the kind of like I think 1980s equivalent to like a Mini Cooper or something like that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So anyway, so yeah, it's called a Yugo. So what do you call a four-door Yugo? Don't know. A bus. A we go. Ah, yeah. That was quite a build up for that joke, wasn't it? <laughs> so I take it the Yugo only had two doors. Yes. Right. Yeah, it was a very, <laughs> very, very, very small car. Uh, subsequently, um, why do chicken coops only have two doors? Don't know. If they had four doors, it would be a chicken sedan. Oh, oh. dear, I oh dear, I oh dear. <laughs> that sounds like it should be in the menu, chicken sedan. Hmm. I don't know. That sounds quite nice, actually. Yeah, getting hungry. Hmm. Yeah. Like an Italian chicken. Cue <laughs> intro music. Clock a de clock. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome one, welcome all to the Underground Sound. This is the recording. If you're watching us on YouTube for our episode 15, if you're listening to us on Spotify, this is obviously the edited, edited, edited version of episode 15. So sit back and enjoy. I am DJ Tech. With me, as always, is Carlos Fandango and gentlemen known as Smart Monkey. Together, we are putting the us back into music. So please do like, subscribe, and share, and we'll find the music that you love to hear. And don't forget to click on the bell so you can follow us and heart us on Spotify as well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> top brow humor, top brow music. This is where we're going here. Uh, first and foremost, I have to congratulate our very own Carlos Fandango on uh, on roping in a woman that actually agreed to marry oh. him. So. <laughs> Three cheers to Carlos and Susie Fellows here. Cheers. May your marriage last a long time and many, many years of happiness to you both. Cheers. Hoorah. Oh. Hoorah. Hoorah. Hip, hip. That's Hoorah. Weird. Now I've done four cheers now. That's it. Now the screen's on you. Well, no, it's not now. <laughs> so hip, hip. 
Hurrah! Hip hip. Hurrah! Hip hip. Hurrah! Okay, there we go. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Good. Cheers to you two as well. Congratulations. This is the last of Scotty G's champ. Well, he says it was champagne. It was his special liquid he got for me. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> His <laughs> Scotty G is very, very special liquid. That he, yeah, he gave to Carlos Fernando. That was a is proper champagne and warm. It, no, it's, it's been chilled, but it is flat uh, now because it's mm. uh, it's had its own. I had to take it back from Wales, and where we had a wedding, and um, unfortunately, you know, I didn't have a cork to put back in or anything to put in there of that size. <laughs> and uh, to plug the gap as such so i just had to improvise with a special sheath of its own didn't really hold in the fizz unfortunately but you know funny that yeah <laughs> it had utility though the old uh sheath so oh, it, it worked it, at least it didn't spill right so Get the liquid in, which is its main objective. Yes. There you go. So at least that worked out right there. <laughs> no spillages. She's such a lucky lady. She? <laughs> she's she's just, just, yeah. I was just going to say, so, Susie, I know what you're thinking. Is uh, you know, okay. Time's <laughs> running out, isn't it? Commiseration, Susie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the long suffering Susie. Poor thing. But uh, she's uh, yeah. She, I, I'm surprised, but she said yes. You know. Mm. I didn't actually propose at any stage, really. We just sort of kind of got around. I, I meant to. I meant to beforehand. So I still, perhaps, perhaps on an anniversary <laughs> like or something. Like, yeah, like she like... just woke up one morning and you broke the news to her that <laughs> yeah. she was married to you. We're getting married, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was an April Fool's Day, so, you know, could have could have been a big joke. <laughs> <laughs> she went through in a total haze and the next day you showed her the video of her getting married she's like well, i remember that <laughs> what did that happen yeah. she like, wake up saturday morning guess what susie <laughs> we're heading out to wales to get married <laughs> <laughs> well she actually um i actually didn't have particularly any accidents on the day i didn't stumble over my words or anything like <laughs> that like we we accidents <laughs> yeah we we accidents and um i yeah and really oh no 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 well actually that's not wholly entirely true uh, but susie did stumble over a couple of lines in the vowels and she almost called me charles which is i mean carl's derivative of charles anyway so it's no big deal but i was thinking who's charles <laughs> <laughs> she went char carl <laughs> <laughs> so but i did realize when I went, after the ceremony and the service and a few photos we went uh, back up to the room to send people pictures and say yeah let some people know and before we had our nice high tea lunch and um i realized when i got upstairs i thought well I, I haven't been to the toilet but my flies are undone so i've got a feeling my flies were undone my zipper on my trousers for the whole ceremony the whole service <laughs> it didn't show <laughs> nothing showed in fact <laughs> as you'd expect <laughs> like we say lucky susie <laughs> <laughs> Lucky, yeah. lucky, Susie. And <laughs> oh my! So God. the line that she stumbled upon was it? I do by any chance? Well, we didn't actually get to say that because in the 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 vowels that we actually read out, there was no I we I will I will do or anything of the, that kind of nature. It's just saying you know I I I can't remember what it was now. Charles, I, 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 Charles. I, Charles, Charlie, Charles. <laughs> commit to you you know all those kind of you know things and stuff and you know it was, it was nice you know just i confirm i love you type thing you know so and uh, the first three lines of the service were actually in welsh because we were getting married in wales so um uh so i don't know what was said there i'm hoping <laughs> it's yes you you will obey <laughs> all this kind of thing but no i don't know what was said at the start you hear that susie you never said I do or I will or anything of the sort. So it's <laughs> not it's not too late to break this fucking contract. Okay. Yeah, exactly. 14 day cooling off period in case you regret your <laughs> yes. purchase. It's never too late to go back to Charles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 side or something. Uh, it was good though. Yeah, we did enjoy ourselves. And it was at Port Merion, so it was a lovely setting. Where they filmed the prisoner TV cult TV yeah, series. Is, I've always wanted to go there. Never been there. Looks 
beautiful. It's well worth it. Yeah, really mm. good, really interesting, good place, great atmosphere. And of course, you know, by the sign, you can do that, be seeing you. Uh, and you've got to do that while you're there. So when you the wedding was in Port Merion, you said, yeah, in the hotel. I was stuff. wondering where it was because it looked nice. It, mm, looked nice. it was the mirror room in, in there, and uh, yeah, we had a few chuckles as well. It's quite a nice, relaxed service, which was good because I, I thought it might be a bit stuffy and formal, but it actually was quite nice and relaxed. And we had a few giggles along the way as well. Good, good, good. That's what it's all about. All about having fun with family, friends, and of course your new spouse. And we do uh, once again congratulations, congratulate yeah. you, and just really we we rib on each other all the time here. But we obviously, you know that we wish you nothing but the best. Cheers. Yeah, thank you very much. I love you, Charles. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> all right. <laughs> our first regular scheduled song of the evening here what afternoon for me but evening over there so temple of the martyrs board me uh what do we got going on here charles <laughs> we have got a temple of the martyrs are from munich in germany at munchen so um yes basically um it says here um, in the comments of Board Me um, that good song, nice and all that kind of thing. Nice guitars, dude. Perfect combination with distorted and clean. Voice, I didn't like that much, though. You should release an instrumental. Harsh. Um, Alessandra 07 says, me likey, me likey. And Kate Angel, who we had on the show, says the guitars rock. Great intro and lead into your song. Oh, there was one song about how do you guys do it every song is a killer song where can i buy your album and that's one of the points i'm going to raise in my comments okay well we'll be looking forward to that thank you uh <laughs> for now here we are board me with temple temple of the martyrs i should say with board me let's check it out
All right, um, here we go. A Temple of the Martyrs with Bored Me, usually for our opening track, because it's usually a, a rock track, which is uh, Carlos Fandango's forte here, or Charles's, I should say. Uh, so right now, we'll just we'll head over to, uh, to, to Robert. Robert, what do you think? Well, thank you, sir. Just for a change of pace. Um, I, I really enjoyed this now. Now, it's an interesting one because um, on my first listen, um, I was like, well, first of all, what does it sound What does it sound like? Uh, to me, it's got an Indies 90 feel, very much an Indies 90 feel to me, and I love that genre of music. Um, and there's elements when you listen to that guitar, you've got elements of the Cure, you've got elements of the Smith Smiths in there, you've got... Um, Production qualities and vocally, I feel more it's akin to things like the Pixies and the Smashing Pumpkins and Flaming Lips. But um, the rawness of it and that very much indie sounding guitar style, I it, it really draws me in and I really do like this, this track. Now, someone commented on the vocals. And on my first listen, I, I was exactly the same. I was like, mm, vocally, the, you know, they're not hitting all the notes. And I wasn't too sure about it. But every time I listen to this track that one more time, I'm warming to it more and more. And then earlier today, I thought, well, I've listened to a couple of other tracks of theirs. And someone else commented about the album. And I tell you what, actually, when you hear all of their tracks it really starts to build a, a, a really good picture of what this band is and what they're capable of doing and 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 their full portfolio of songs is more impressive than just listening to this one so i would tell everybody to go listen to the other tracks because this would be a classic example of where you should buy an album because i feel that every one of them adds its own element to a whole like portfolio of, of songs that that show their talents this one on isolation isn't it um but that said every time i listen to this and this again is the next listen i've had i i, I just warm to it more and more and i warm to this band more and more all right charles what do you think mm, well <clears throat> They've done quite a few tracks. They've done quite a few singles. Just following on from what Rob said, Rob said there uh, was. Um, I mean, this one was from. Um, I think it looks like an EP. No, the smoke will clear, as in K N O W. No, um, and but there are more tracks out there that look like it's from an album. Um, Lost chemistry. So they're they're really quite prolific, and the quality is consistent. And it has that sort of, yeah, you, so you've got alt rock, rock, indie rock sort of sound. As Rob said, a bit of 90s in there. For me, a bit of mid to late 80s indie rock as well. Those kind of alternative ones. Definitely Smiths with the jangly guitars of Johnny Marr type of sound in there. If you were to put a Morrissey vocal on top of this track, it then becomes a Morrissey solo song from the 90s. It's very yeah, mid to late 90s Morrissey. And uh so I, I can't help but think he must be a bit of an influence there. Uh, but the singing, yeah, I think it fits the music. Um, yes, he's not hitting all the notes necessarily cleanly, but that's not what it's about. This is about attitude. This has got the kind of swagger and attitude about it. And it's about being bored. Who cares? What the fuck? You know, it's just, just you know, they, yeah, it's that total attitude. Almost like it's from a, the sound of the song almost could be a sort of a late end credits of a, Brat Pack film, yeah, late Brat Pack film type of thing, you know, so it's got a bit of attitude in there. Um, yeah, uh, it's a bit of a grower. I think on second and third listen, it improves. And the chorus is kind of sticky, so it does stay in your ears. Um, not not entirely my usual cup of tea, I say that, but I do like the Smiths, I do like Morrissey, I do like The Cure, so it kind of has got elements of what I like. But I wouldn't necessarily listen to this, but then I've listened to other tracks of theirs, I want to acquire them, guys. Please, Temple of the Martyrs, can you put them on iTunes? Because I was going to acquire them and play them on the We Love Rock and Roll show. So if you can put them on there, that'd be great. Because I want to buy a couple of your tracks, please. 
there we interesting go interesting what you say about because i would have liked to have known their influences and they haven't put them up there no. and what is very interesting is we just said that they're a band from germany but they sound so english in their yeah. style mm. um and yeah I, I i'm just intrigued where what has influenced them they could have been through, could have been from the manchester scene couldn't they yeah exactly very exactly definitely good point again yeah because i didn't even think about that like okay so we have we have a german band that could possibly yeah because it, it did sound very 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 english to me as well uh right off the bat with the guitar i got a, I got a really uh you know i got a cure vibe off of this thing and uh you know and then and then it kind of like when it segway when it segued into the um into the vocals and the song started progressing i started thinking about more like a 90s type of like you know oasis song or so or you know or something of of, of that nature so it kind of had you know the best of both worlds um where that's concerned now the comments that i'm gonna make here are based on this song alone because this song is just generally a little bit slower than we usually get for the uh for the opening track so this is kind of like a mid-tempo indie-ish kind of rock song and everything here so um i take whoever left the comments about the vocals uh i'm i i get your point on that um there was a bit of falsetto in there and um you know as, as you guys mentioned you know didn't really hit all all of the notes and it just it was off at times and everything like that but once again i'm just basing my my uh my judgment on this song is because i have not i have not heard any other ones um so the vocals i think do need improvement where the song is concerned um because either they're not kind of like mastered correctly into the uh into the mix or maybe this was just like a kind of like one and done uh take and um and you know then it was just kind of like slightly mastered uh but as far as the production quality i think it's a little bit off but i do want to say that the kind of like ebb and flow of the song work this is a, a, a very catchy song it's nice to listen to and it's just like it's just that thing it's just those vocals just kind of like jab at you um you know if you if you're if you're going to sit there and listen to it through a um you know through a production ear and perspective you know so that's that's the only thing that i would recommend with this one is just maybe if this is like a like a first draft kind of song and um you know and then then, then just work on those work on those lyrics a little bit i'm not i'm not going to sit here and say that that the uh you know that the uh, that the singer is just absolutely fucking you know horrible ter or terrible he's definitely not he's keeping up with the tempo he's he's got the rhythm of the song going on it's you know it's just a it's just a few key parts you know during the um during the switches from like the uh, verse to the chorus and then and then back again you know it's it's <laughs> very subtle but um but it's there but it's there so i do understand how how somebody could make that comment and i kind of like feel that way once again just based on this song that's all that I can say about that. So, overall, I th I got to think decent. That's that's where I'm going to put it. I'm gonna, I'm going to put it like you know, like if we were doing like a one to ten kind of like you know how good was it? I'm going to put this one like like a, like a. It's going to be a very strong six, like a six six and a half is where I would be as far as like a rating on this one would go. It's interesting though. It's one of those songs we've done this before sometimes. And it's one of those songs that the more you listen to, you give it a couple of goes, two, three, it it starts to warm on you. It's 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 an odd thing. And even those off vocals almost become part of the characteristic of this band. Um, and Flaming Lips, I, I mentioned the Flaming Lips, and you know, often their lead vocalist wasn't bang on, but it added that element of of character to to their style of music and i'm just wondering if there's a little bit of me that's warming to that for this band and that would then draw that out um i'm very much a fan of indie music though of indie alternate rock I always was you know i always liked the fact it was off the mainstream you know you had your nice pretty pretty music and then you had your sort of indie scene that was bubbling up that was a little bit off center from that and so I've always warmed to this, and I, I do, really do like this track purely because it does hop to that sort of in the era. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
was I, I, I recommend a few listens personally. Yeah, so I, I was just looking. I was just looking at this up real quick, and so I think it's it's either Mick Jones or Don Letts who's the um, the uh, the lead singer for uh, for Big Audio Dynamite. And so for Big Audio Dynamite, um, you know, uh, this gentleman's voice definitely reminded me of that style, um, you know, of of vocals. So it had a little bit of that had a little bit of that rasp in it, maybe a little bit of like nasalness, you know what I mean? So uh, overall, I got to say, once again, it's, you know, it's, it's decent. I just decent. think yeah. it's, there's just a little bit of work that needs to go, that needs to go in there. So I just wanted to look that up real quick, just to, just to like, mm -hmm. like quantify on my point over there with uh, where the vocals are concerned. Uh, otherwise, like I said, I mean, you know, we got all the, small things you know i mean it it definitely has this 80s 90s vibe to it mm, and, and you know ultimately ultimately a catchy song and um i'm pretty sure that you know when i put together my playlist if this one came up i wouldn't you know skip over this i just maybe you're right maybe you're right maybe i do need to give it two or three more listens before mm, no, before, a, a, before a proper critique is due mm. you know so but i mean Again, good job. Anyone that's really pushing through and ju and just pushing out there and, and you know their music out there and you know it's gonna be it's gonna be criticized. It's gonna be talked about. You know, and it's and hopefully ultimately applauded because we've heard some you know from the uh, from the a year and a half, almost two years that we're going on this show now. Uh, actually, Carl and I we're we're just approaching our two year mark. We'll, we'll be approaching our two year mark with uh, with Rob on the show as well. But I mean, so for, from within those one and a half, two years, we've heard some fantastic music. And I mean, mm. uh, you know, this stuff definitely uh, deserves to be on the radio. So please do visit the description below. If you like that one, add it to your own personal playlist and let's maybe, let's maybe get somebody. Um, if, if we can't get enough people to financially compensate somebody, then at least let's give them some recognition and pass them along to family and friends, because who knows, you know, um, one share, of a song could make the difference between you know staying in the bedroom and just blowing up and being out on stage right so that's what i would recommend to everybody is please do visit the video the, not the video the, but the but the show description below and just if you like any of these songs then just click on links go and you know throw out a comment if you're able to share it with your friends if you like it enough to and uh and again let's just get the word out on these indie musicians as we have been trying to do for uh you know are nearly two years going on here so carl i'm, I'm not going to call you carlos Fandango today i'm going to call you charles charles <laughs> charles uh, we have hillman husky which is uh sarah tough with a song called behind the microscope what's going on here what's going on is sarah tough is from ottawa in ontario canada canada we do get a lot of Canadians on this show. Uh, she's an independent female artist, originally from the UK, currently living in Ottawa. Uh, influences include Katie Tunstall, John Mayer, uh, Damien Rice, and City and Colour. Um, John Mayer, John Mayer. That was Jack and Diane, wasn't it? Or was am I getting that wrong? No, maybe not. Ignore that. Um, what have people said about behind the microphone? Well, least of all so sarah tuff who is hillman husky says the song was written about even how the worst days can be made better by just sitting behind a little recording microphone and playing around life is hectic especially as a single mama but there's peace behind uh, peace behind the mic for me um so what have people said well um gold 6821 says the voice and production on this is tops uh, musical fisherman Calzamea says, <laughs> love it. Great voice, nicely produced. Mark Ole, 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 Ole says, um, great song, great mix. Love the heartbeat drum and the background vocals. So, yeah, lots of positive comments. And Colin Stanton, indeed, who we've had on the show before a long time ago, says, very lovely production, terrific mastering, and your vocals, Gary Starlight. How well, nice is that? All right. You're only allowed to do two comments per show from now on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll pick on the shorter ones anyway. JC <laughs> Wilde, just in case, little sneaky one. JC Wilde says, "I'm shocked." I'm shocked. Yes, I'm shocked. That, that 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 should have been the way to go because we were because earlier on we were talking about you waffling. Well, I, the, I did try and say them fast. Comments. <laughs> if you did the short ones only, it would be nice, fiery. Yeah, yeah. It'd be <laughs> Every <pointless> time. <laughs> 
yeah that's true yeah. maybe i'll just pick out one but it's just that they say nice things it's nice for the artists if you're still getting in touch with them and they say they watch the show then or listen to it then it's nice for them to hear it as well mind you they've probably read it haven't they already good thing good point Probably, probably. Yeah, I've, I've sort of destroyed my own argument there, so let's not do those. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hillman Husky, otherwise, uh, you know, Sarah, Sarah Tuff, uh, behind the, the, I said microscope earlier, didn't I? Oh, did you? Did you? I think I did. I think I said <laughs> oh, Freudian slip. Oh, sorry. Behind the microphone is what the uh, name of the song is there. So let's <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Block me in again The kids are fighting Cat and dog It's driving me insane I'm running down the sidewalk And of course Here comes the rain I can feel the makeup I threw on It's running down my face And I say I can't wait To go home And get behind that microphone I can't wait To go home Get behind that microphone I'm hitting every red light There's construction in my lane And I made it here on time But now the doctor's running late I've got a hundred missed calls And my phone's about to die I forgot to put the trash out And I left on all the lights But I smile I can't wait to go Get behind that microphone I can't wait to go home And if I ever lose my mind Get me behind the microphone And if I ever lose my mind Get me behind the microphone And if I ever me in again the kids are fighting cat and dog it's driving me insane i'm running down the sidewalk and of course here comes the rain i can feel the makeup i threw on it's running down my face and i say i can't wait to go home and get behind that microphone i can't wait to go Okay, <clears throat> behind the microphone, also available on Spotify. So if you are listening to us on Spotify, think about checking the think about checking that one out. That is by Hillman Husky, otherwise known as Sarah Tuff. I'm not sure what her uh, what her Spotify profile is going to look like because we're doing this off of uh, off of Slab. So it may be Hillman Husky, it may be Sarah Tuff. Uh, who knows? So Carlos Fanning, take it away. Mm, so, um, well, first of all. Hasn't she got a lovely? I mean, the, the comment about the vocals. I meant Charles. Charles, yes, Charles, Charlie, Charles. Um, the comment about the vocals, uh, well deserved, really, because you know there's something special about those vocals. She's got a lovely timbre to her voice. 
remind although she's uh, i think i could hear some of the a more northerly accent northern english accent coming out in, in some of the the ly lyrics but but the way she enunciates the words is very reminiscent of Sophia Les Baxter. So I've imagined Sophia Les Baxter doing an acoustic track like this, and you've got a lot of that sort of sound in there. Um, I mean, she mostly does dance and pop music, but um, Sophia Les Baxter does. But uh, this is nice. Um, the words, the lyrics are enunciated clearly. You know, you can hear them all. So you can follow the lyrics and they're nice lyrics and good lyrics. It's almost like a sort of stream of consciousness. Yeah, it's, it's like a sort of nice, nice version of Ian Dury in a way. Yeah, because it's, yeah, that was just very day to day sort of stuff. And this is the mundane grind. But just thinking, you know, isn't this nice to get away behind the mic where you can lose yourself? And it is really the most Jordan Peterson said about, yeah, the way if you can pass time very quickly as if it's like nothing that's the zone that you want to get into and this is exactly it you know get lost behind the mic uh, so the sentiment will be shared by singers and people who just like doing creative pursuits in general um yeah the arrangement's fairly sparse it works because the focal point is those wonderful vocals she's got a great voice and i'd like to hear more from her um she's good i like it i think it has, so it, if i'm not mistaken we've had sarah on the show before I don't think so. No. No. Nope. Uh, then I've I've heard her somewhere uh, somewhere before. Is we've had a couple of singers that weren't dissimilar in a way because um, yeah, there, there were a couple of songs that yeah you know, we've had where there are female vocalists who have a nice clear you know sort of way of singing. All righty. Well, Gary Ford says, "Cheers, guys!" Again. <laughs> so oh, yeah, hey, Gary. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Gary. Trying to get us drunk again, Gary. Stop making us cheers all the time. You know we get drunk. Yep. Well, I'm going to cheers back. <laughs> for for someone that's religious, he certainly is trying to make us drink a lot, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Keep him coming, Gary. <laughs> cheers. 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 <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yes. All right. <sighs> Smart monkey. What say you, sir? Well, you know, I have to echo quite a lot of what Carl's Charles has just said um so vocals firstly beautiful they really are they but we also must must put it down to some of the production qualities on this track because the production is done in such a way that it really complements her vocals um and the warmth just comes out in this mix it's a real sort of um warm feel to the way they've they've mixed it and produced it um it i have to agree with with carl about the the sort of um i want to say working class element to the way that the song is done the lyrics are that you know it's just a, a moment in the life of of someone in, in their daily routine and it comes across really well it's poet it's poetic is is what it is um and then I uh, also love the fact that this northern English accent sort of pops out just to add to that that kind of um, working class element of it, which I love. I really love. I don't mean that in a derogatory sort of way. And the way that she delivers the lines about, of course, here comes the rain. It's got that northern lilt coming through in the way she delivers that line. Um, there's a lot to really like about this um she reminded me a little bit of tracy thorne from everything but the girl was this kind of that kind of very sort of i want to say i want to keep on harp, harping on about that northern aspect of it but it has that whole feel that whole vibe about it um and and just a really good vocalist so yeah oh and the other thing i wanted to say was i absolutely love the fact that the guitar the way it's plucked and and performed almost does convey raindrops as they're sort of falling and as i was listening to this song i could almost even though she doesn't put this bit in the lyrics i could almost see her sitting in her car and the raindrops just spattering onto the windscreen as she's sort of delivering this kind of poetry it's it's got a lot of visual visual effects that come through the way it's done i, I really enjoyed this really did Oh, just a quick comment on the guitars. Um, 
obviously guitar squeaks were kept to a minimum but i noticed a couple on the bass guitar i think it's bass guitar because it sounded like a bass guitar squeak and it was you know i have a bit of a thing about squeaks if it's overdone this was perfect because you had a couple of very nice sounding squeaks that went with the time of the music the feel of the music it was a long and it was nice and so they can be used to a song's advantage and i would encourage people to just listen out for those ones that sound really good and rhythmic but don't you know don't sort of just dampen them but utilize them as well if they're good ones i'm just saying you know there's there's a lot of songs that use you know uh you know musical effects you know i mean <laughs> yeah so so it should be i kind of agree with you is like it should be used sparingly but i mean i don't i don't necessarily mind hearing them in a song charles uh so yeah um i really I, I really like your voice and i really like the storytelling and and um and i gotta say that that for the uh for as minimalistic as it is the production quality on this one is 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 quite good um it is quite simple you know and and back to your point like like what you were talking about rob is you can totally picture her driving home from work just having like like kind of like a rough day just you know being a single mom is tough and it's just like you know not taking anything away from that at all whatsoever just because i mean you know um i could even imagine you know um there's a lot of women that are that are single moms to you know one child which i see them kind of like frantically running around and taking care of everything you know but then imagine like having maybe a family of like two three maybe even four children and it's just like that just makes it even that much more hectic because mm -hmm. everybody else had just has something else to do consistently especially as as everybody starts growing up and becoming you know becoming adults young adults teenagers you know maybe maybe, maybe you still have a toddler and i could even imagine that tell you the truth having a teenager and a toddler at the same time i would be absolutely just just could just going out of my mind so the fact that she can find solace behind the microphone and um and actually still has time to kind of like you know to to, to make for herself to make music is just fantastic so i applaud you for that on top of that, she has a very nice voice. I can't make really too many comments on the um, on the dialect or, or the way that the voice sounds because I'm American. So unless you give me a country accent, I can more, you know, if it was a country accent, I could more or less pinpoint, you know, are they from Texas? Are they from Oklahoma? Are they like from Nebraska? You know, I'd be able to like maybe pinpoint certain things here or there. So I don't know if she was this. This sounded very. Um, her voice at least to me sounded uh very american except for the fact that there was there was a couple of times when i was thinking about again i keep on i always forget her name i've looked her up so many times but the lead singer of the cranberries which was carl dolores carl? yeah dolores thing there you go dolores what i, I don't i know I, uh dolores oh it's gone for me at the moment dolores always open <laughs> oh no it's um but you're right tom no no, no. You, you you told me because it was uh it was supposed to be pronounced because it looks like it says oh rear den oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and he told me how to how to how to pronounce it correctly is it so it was supposed to be oridan or something like that no it's a ridden a ridden yeah okay so yeah yeah so that that's 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 where it was confusing me because i was trying to think of the way that you had actually told me to pronounce it in the way it's it was actually uh damn we told you the right way uh, we should have done yeah well <laughs> well you know <laughs> we could have had you on there yeah. no it's oriarden oriarden yeah so i got little bits and tinges of that but um but yeah otherwise this sounded kind of like perfectly uh you know perfectly um american to be honest yeah yeah i i uh, didn't you know? get exactly where you're coming from because the overriding vocals do sound american in the way they're delivered and it's only for us probably us english uh, us brits that can hear that little lilt of that northern accent coming through they're ever so subtle no many people aren't going to pick them up but no it's only on certain well, words that's all. i gotta I, I gotta figure i gotta figure that you guys hear all these dialects like like maybe not on a consistent basis but more often than than you know than than uh, us yanks do as it were because yeah usually, usually only when i watch doctor who do i hear all the dialects 
But I'm just saying, <laughs> bad talk shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Charles, <laughs> shut up. It's my turn now, okay? <laughs> uh, one so, of my favorite Doctor Who monsters, Daleks, but there we go. That's mm. another story. Northern dialects or southern dialects? <laughs> <laughs> they come from anywhere. <laughs> Carry on, Tom. Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> Just get it out of your system. <laughs> Ready now. Ultimately, you guys have a very small island. That it's a bit personal. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. I think it's average size, personally, but... <laughs> I'm going to say ultimately. I'm going to say ultimately. I mean, <laughs> what do you guys have the land mass of? Uh, it's small, yeah, Germany. It's small. Germany is bigger than... than, uh, than, than oh, yeah. Than that. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. Ultimately, you guys have a very small island. and, and within, All right, don't keep rubbing it in. <laughs> with, <laughs> within the island, you have Irish. Gaelic, you have Scottish, you have uh, you know uh, English, you have Welsh, and like what we were just talking about. So, like I said, I would imagine that you guys pick up on more dialects than I could actually pinpoint with my ear because it's mainly when they say exterminate. <laughs> I just wanted to come out with exterminate as well. Exterminate. <laughs> I thought anyone could have recognised that. <laughs> Why do you have to keep going on about Daleks? I mean, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Wait till the Electronica song you'll be talking about Cybermen. <laughs> okay, so next time, what word would you have me rather? What word would you rather have accent. me use? Accent. Accent. Yeah, yeah, we can't really do much with accent. Yeah, accent. No? Okay. <laughs> So the Irish accent, the Gaelic accent, the Welsh yeah, yeah. accent, the English accent. Yes, and it, that's where that's where I'm supposed yeah. to go. Fuck the both Although those are languages rather than accents, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I probably would have used the words dialect myself. <laughs> yes, probably safer with dialect. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, no, no, because I already know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna get shit from the both of you either way. That this, you know, I can, it's not gonna matter what I say, which is which is all well and good. It's fine. No, I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a joke yet. Well, since the start. Of the, no, no, we haven't had a joke. Yet. <laughs> we haven't had a joke. Yet. <laughs> You're absolutely right. We have not had a joke yet. I've got one called Antiques Roadshow. Which in the UK, maybe in America as well, but they, they may be popular in America. But we have a Antiques Roadshow is a Sunday evening afternoon series that's shown on the British telly where people take their antiques and have them valued by professionals. So people know what they are. Oh, you do? Yes. I'm not sure because no, no, it plays because because we have uh, we have a subsidiary of of, uh, of BBC in the United States, so we mm. get the Antiques Roadshow there, and then also we have a public broadcasting network uh, where they show the um, the Antiques Roadshow. So I totally know what you do. And I've got. I, was, I wasn't sure if you knew because most of the antiques are older than the country, so <laughs> of America, you know. So it's, I just wasn't sure if they showed it out there. It's not, but it's not like we don't have the fucking items here for fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys brought them over. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> soldier, the, soldier, the old London Bridge as well. Yeah, seriously. So the Antiques Roadshow is in town. A man comes in dragging a huge metal box. So uh, asked the antiques expert, "Where, where did you get this from?" Well, says the man, "I found it up in the attic. It's been there for over forty years." And I think it's a bit of a family heirloom. Should I get it? In, should I get insurance? Definitely you should, says the expert. This is your water tank. Your house is flooded. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, dear. I did the last line just for clarity. <laughs> oh, no, we did those ones. What do you get if you dial 666? That's for the UK, this, this one. So no, because I know I, I know that your emergency services are different. Nine 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 nine. So it has to do something with that for sure. But I just yep. I just don't know. An upside down policeman. God, it's terrible. <laughs> that is. What really does is. 
What I thought it was going to be any... like some kind of satanic joke coming <laughs> yeah. in there, which was worrying me <laughs> for a moment. And you thought that these are somehow better than, than my you go and my chicken joke right now. Well, uh, what about this one? What does a clock, because we had the clocks going forward recently, so what does a clock do? That's clock do when it's hungry. Hmm. It goes back for seconds. Four seconds. <laughs> All right, on that note. <sighs> is it still the same joke book? <laughs> yeah, it's got good and bad, I've got to say. Yeah, it's <laughs> clearly starting to go down here. Isn't it? no. it's, I have to be selective, you know. I, I know that last show, we had a couple of good chuckles off that book, but this show, nope. There's some good ones coming up, don't so, you? Yeah, <laughs> says you, Charles. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to take a picture of this because I had to, I had to, I, I had to tape uh, a little piece of paper with the uh, with the name Charles on top of it, like right over where where I see you. So I remember to keep yeah. calling you Charles throughout the show. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, Carl is a derivative of Charles. So I <laughs> don't care. I want to call you Charles. People used to call me Charles. Some people. So <laughs> what that actually says he's got another piece of paper there that reminds him to call you Carl or Carlos Fandango because week after week he forgets your name. He forgets your name. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, <laughs> Carlos Fanego, I can clearly see just as you guys can see he's, ZPX Tech. He's got a few C words written down for me. <laughs> 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 Depending on how he feels. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is true. <laughs> <That> one, uh, <laughs> and he has called me that before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, many times. Many yes, times. indeed. Yes. Yeah. yes. Especially when I was messing around with that uh, with that AI. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to have thick skin. It's amazing <laughs> this, what colourful words it filled in for you there, yeah. wasn't it? You didn't pick any of those, Tom, did you? It picked those words. Who yeah. knows? You just give it the instructions. Use things to describe Carlos Fandango. Exactly. <laughs> just, just put those in and those words. It, it wasn't even that. It wasn't even that. All I had to do was type in Carlos Fandango in the whole script. Boom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. AI is fucking fantastic. Are you sure that was AI, not Scotty G? <laughs> <laughs> you asked for information from because he that's the sort of thing it sounds like he'd make up i mean scott kind of talks like a robot anyway right so who knows <laughs> 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 well what um, by his own admission he said he has a nasally voice he could be a robot uh, we have never seen him have we so maybe scotty g is just ai yeah as many times well, that's true. there is a picture though of the two of us but Yes. Or do you think that's an AI generated picture? Yep, yeah, it's just a picture. That's all. Would AI generate a picture like that? No. <laughs> let, let, let me explain. I, I'm hoping you, Scott's going to be listening because he is you, said he you, was. You created that album cover. Yes. On Photoshop. I've seen people do miraculous shit with Photoshop. Yep. So you yep. putting so you putting somebody next to you that doesn't actually exist is not a far stretch of the imagination in 2024, buddy. <laughs> Have I done the same with my wedding pictures? Do you think <laughs> this suits you? That yeah, I think so. I think so. You said didn't exist. In fact, I reckon that for that cover, what you did is you took a picture of yourself, just yep. yourself, then you put it through an AI algorithm yes. and said, yep. "Make another person, maybe a better looking version of me, <laughs> an alternative universe version." Yeah, and that's what it's done. Because wow. when you look at you, there are like little similarities. Little Both similarities. Small. Both shiny. Yeah. Age white guys look about the same age. Yeah. Just an AI Fine. version of you, better looking. Yeah. You know, here's here's the thing. <laughs> if you lost like 50, if if you lost like fifty pounds, <laughs> I think that you would look exactly like Scotty G. <laughs> Two, three. That's about right, actually. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't lose quite much, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's quite slender, very slender at the moment. Yes, but uh, yes, yes, and I do need to lose quite a few pounds. So actually, that's not a bad call. Yes, you do, Tubby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have seen the. Uh, I did. I said I might have sent you the statue selfie of uh, standing next to Nelson like this, but I had just. You should have seen the one with my waistcoat sort of bursty open with my work, white shirt underneath it was oh it just made me think i've got to lose weight now I really one have. where i wasn't breathing in <laughs> is what he's trying to say well i looked at him i thought oh that's awful 
Nils <laughs> never looked like that. I forgot to put my girdle on and yeah, <laughs> like just a barrel. Well, with that lady in the shop saying I, I was very round, you know, so uh I don't know, there's just it's just starting to show now, so I need to really <laughs> you, you're not very round, man. You're you're like pear shaped. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've got very wide hips anyway, so even if I slim oh, down, yeah, but that's right. childbearing hips. <laughs> I've got childbearing hips. Childbearing. I'd be perfect for trans, wouldn't I? <laughs> I could they could do an experiment it on looks, me because it looks like you have thin legs. No, no, I've got chunky legs. It, Always had chunky I, legs. I'm just, I'm just saying on the pictures that I've seen, oh. right? It looks like you have thin legs, it's just, then it's you have like this. Just this massive booty. <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just sort of wide. That's what, that's <laughs> just that, wide all the way down. That carries, that carries up, you know, through your stomach, and and as it keeps on going up, you start getting thinner and thinner, right? Because no, not at all. Yeah. It's, it's actually just that I'm sort of wide, just wide. I love just quite, just quite stout and wide booty bit, and you come down, and it goes down to this booty, uh -huh. and it's almost like the sound you were <laughs> made was almost like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do this booty. <laughs> mm, I'm loving your booty, oh, darling. Oh, and you just sort of taper in at the top. <laughs> yeah. Little pinhead. <laughs> well, when I said booty, I just meant your entire hip area there. Okay. <laughs> Just, yeah, I mean, my I've got wide <laughs> hips. Even if I slim down, I'm sort of wide, wider than most. It's just really annoying. But <laughs> you do that Shakira song. It's like, uh, <laughs> my, my hips don't lie, <laughs> or however the hell it went. I don't know. I don't yeah, want to do that dance to us, Carl. <laughs> yeah, I might do that. Actually, when, when, when we all get together, I'll do that. Yeah. If we have some sort of host wedding stag do, which we will, in about Mayish time, you're gonna come in just to Shakira nicer. and do that dance. I don't know about the Shakira, but you know, I do the dance for money. <laughs> <laughs> Stick money in my little cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! I'm going to get you a speedo, especially for that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Mankini. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, a bit sick. <laughs> bit of sick came up on me as well. Uh, <laughs> all right, Charles. Yash. Mickey with delusion. What's going on here? Well, it's one of your compatriots here from Holskar. So is it Krakow? Krakow. 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 I never knew it's Krakow. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, well, the, the translation of different countries is different because obviously we have different accents on different words. But yes, it is K. K R A K O slash W. W is pronounced <laughs> like a V. And, yeah. the o, and the O is basically pronounced like a U. Uh, the O with the slash on top of it is pronounced like a U. So, Krakow. Krakow. Mm. I know people like to crack off once in a while. But uh, <laughs> so we've got Mickey with Delusion. Oh, I don't know if you want to share this artwork or not. It's a bit scary, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, that's this. I don't. It, I don't know if I want to get in trouble with YouTube because this exactly looks, yeah, yeah. This, this looks this kind is, of grim. We can sort of semi-describe it that he's playing face down in water. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yes. I say playing, it's not really sweet. He could be swimming, could be swimming. Uh, but um, yes, uh, comments, he's right. No, he's he's looking for gold. Oh, he's looking for gold. Yes, panning for gold. Yes, he's panning for gold underwater. <laughs> right, okay. Face uh, down, down so that way he could see better. So the two comments I'm going to choose are uh, Dr. Bausch says, so good atmospherically with a heart thing. And D-A-S-L says, oh, yeah, love the Atmos. There you go. Keep it to two. See how easy, see how quickly that goes, Charles? Right. I'll do that from now on, yes. All right. Here we go. Mickey with Delusion. It is available on Spotify. So anybody that's listening to us on Spotify right now, Go check that one out there. Carl will eventually get to the uh, get to the um, administrative portion of the, <laughs> of the description and everything like that. So there will be links. Go check it out if you like it. This one is short and sweet. One minute, 48 seconds. Let's check it out.
Okay, well, we have two resident electronic experts here, myself and Smart Monkey. Smart Monkey. Oh, what? sorry. Wow. What? I think I'm a bit of an electronic expert. You're <laughs> I'm, good, I'm, good, I'm, I'm good with light bulbs. I didn't say electrical. Oh, electronic. It's the well, same thing. It's electronic. <laughs> oh. oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Although I'm a big fan. Really? Oh, of changing light bulbs? Well, a synth and electronica, I mean, you know, of, of the classic synth and electronica, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm actually very surprised with you that you actually chose this song, but Smart Monk, take it away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's interesting, because is this your kind of style, Carl? But let's let's come back to that in a minute. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this. Being a bit of a fan of electronic music myself. Um, <laughs> I have one fault, which I'll come back to in a minute, but I loved that slow build that comes in. It's got a rich low bass that sort of gradually opens out into the rest of the track and got that vocal, which I'm always a bit of a fan of, a little bit of um, vocal speech elements in, in electronic music. I do enjoy those. Um, and then it kicks in and you've got the main sort of, drum beat the main portion of the track my big beef with this track is that because it has that slow build up and then it gets to the main track being only what minute or so long or a little bit more than that but you know it's not a long track it just ends too short it's just got going i'm really starting to enjoy it all the elements are coming together and then it ends um, so personally, I would love to hear this a bit more of a an extended mix. I think this track deserves it. Um, but, you know, I felt that production-wise, really good. All the elements were there. Just that it just never got going enough for me, and it ended too short. So that's, that's the only thing that's going to really hold me back, because I probably would have loved this more. If it had carried on going, uh, I'll get more into that. Charles. I think I'll get more into it as well because I think I have a take on that. So, firstly, short, yes, uh, creates a, but in that time, it creates a dark, moody atmosphere. The track builds to a climax, which we're often sort of mentioning that tracks don't seem to have a climax these days. So, that's good. But <clears throat> I think. This presumably segues into another track. That's what I'm thinking. So, and I, mm. I think what Rob's alluding to there is that actually what you could do is build on this. So therefore, this theme, like in a Jean-Michel Jarre-esque way, could be developed. So later on, you could return to this theme a couple of times, but expand it big in the middle somewhere of the album if you did an album. So I think, yeah, this definitely uh, is is, an, is a theme to be explored. Um, is it Eno, Vangelis, Ja, Moby, uh, maybe William Orbit? Don't know, it's a bit of a hybrid of, of all of those, but it has piqued my interest in the artist and I hope it's piqued the viewer's interest as well. Um, one question I had was, just a sort of open-ended rhetorical question is, perhaps could he collaborate with Tom's nephews 
who are the ones who do the rap. What about that? I mean, imagine him doing some background music for them as rap artists. That kind of interesting music with their rap could be a lethal combination. So, and they've had success already. So, I reckon your nephews, Tom, should get in touch with this guy. I agree with like 90% of what you said there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> controversial. Uh, let me say controversy or anything like that. But I mean, 10% is. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> you don't agree with me. It's controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, su I'm surprised that you chose this track for the noise gate. Oh, okay. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, but it wasn't that bad. Oh, it was bad. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, see, was that part of the track because of the title, Delusional? And there is this, like, point where it does that stereo panning. Because if you're listening to it through the speakers as well, it's panning on that bit as well. Um, whether it is just there to almost knock your senses out a little bit. It doesn't go through the whole track. I don't like when a song makes me dizzy, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and that, that's exactly yeah. what happened is, is, you know, the, the, the noise gate pan, whatever you want to call it. I've, I've always known it as a noise gate. So that's that's what I'm saying. Is that really kind of like fast left, right, left, right, left, right, panning, right? Like you didn't do like kind of like a slow transition from, from you know, from, from left to right. You didn't make it kind of like Dolby-ish or anything like that. It's just ultimately like fucking windshield wipers just going fucking crazy like as you're driving through, um you know, a massive rainstorm or something like that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of like... You know, and I know that it annoys Carl Charles as much as it does uh, me. So, um, so that's why I'm really surprised that this track was chosen. And yes, I agree. Also, that the uh, uh, you know the production is decent, but absolutely, I do think that this song leads somewhere else. Mm, I think you might be and, right. There. And um, and I think that we should have with this one, if kind of like you know if we did like due diligence and we found where the song kind of like led into then we probably should have listened to this and the next one mm, paired uh, them kind together of, kind of, yes kind of like back mm. to back especially since it was only one minute and 48 seconds long this may have been an intro to like let's say like a two or three minute track mm. then we could have like had a like let's say like a nice five minute kind of like electronic track that we could really like kind of like you know like kind of like sit here and dive into as far as right now I'm not impressed i'm not impressed and it's just kind of like uh yeah so we went we went from the annoying windshield wipers to basically a climax cutoff and that's where we're at with this song that's why that's why i'm saying is that i'm not impressed and so aside from the production quality being good because you know the bass and everything they they were where they needed to be they were they were nicely kind of like uh proliferated you know you could definitely hear it um aside from that I got to say that that there's that there's stuff lacking and all i'm doing again folks all i'm doing is i'm basing it off this one song on this show that's it that's all i'm doing this is the song that carl picked this is the song that's on our playlist and this is the one that we're reviewing and that's all i'm doing i'm not trying to be simon cal here because i do think that this the, the, the this one would have had some really good potential because i think it's going somewhere but the whole thing is that we don't know where it's going because this is what we're listening to but if you did enjoy it obviously description is below click on the link once carl does his admin duties and then um and then uh you know oh we'll get around to it sorry <laughs> no, no, I'm it's, a bit behind it's a, it's a, yeah no i get it <laughs> well you're a big oh it sounds like i'm a big bit behind us no that's a you're a big <laughs> one i get it we should play sir man i like big butts and i can't <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I'm, I'm just a bit straight that's all <laughs> No, bro, you look like a pear. I'm telling you, you look like a pear with like fucking toothpicks at the bottom for, for legs. Nah, my legs are actually quite big because they're, they're actually always been quite solid and big. But it's just that at the moment, I'm a bit bigger than usual up here. So <laughs> bigger than well, your legs. I'm bigger, than <laughs> <laughs> a bit bigger than my legs, which you should be really, shouldn't you? Well, I mean, <laughs> it looked weird if I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> just a big pair of legs, a tiny little body, a little head. <laughs> that would look weird. Too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, Lord. <laughs>
<laughs> God, those Hall of Mirrors now. <laughs> Where you're just standing in front of the yeah. Hall of Mirrors, oh. standing on legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I must have had the camera on stick legs mode. Yeah. All, uh, all of a sudden, you're like two feet shorter than you actually are, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I should be more in proportion when you see me uh, in person. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and you can admire my butt, though. It's, uh, you know, it's a good butt. We can touch your butt well, in oh, person. If, if oh. you want to, yeah. I have no qualms about that. That's fine. I'll touch what you want when you want. I'll bring my tape measure with me and then you know we could talk so <laughs> All right, <then>, yeah. <laughs> I've got jokes about idiots here if you want if we're allowed to do those and it says Ooh, what the made you say it like that <laughs> <laughs> these two idiots taking the bits out of my butt <laughs> oh sorry it did sound like that didn't I? funny enough we've got jokes about idiots here <laughs> it says insert the group or person of your choice in place of the word idiot I think I'll just use idiot did you hear about the idiot who was learning to tap dance? He kept falling in the sink. It's an old one. Did you hear about the idiot who couldn't complete a two-piece jigsaw? His excuse was that he had lost the lid. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> I'm an idiot for not getting it, I suppose. Did you hear about the idiot who took a tie back to the shop? Said it was too tight. <laughs> That's quite good. You seriously didn't get the jigsaw one? You didn't get the jigsaw one. Well, because that is the two pieces. No, because the freaking the lid usually shows you what the picture looks like. Oh, I see. Of course, yes. <laughs> Did you hear the one about the idiot who didn't get the jigsaw piece joke? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Insert name here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, one more. Do you want one more? Did you hear about the idiot who fell out of the window? He'd been trying to iron his curtains. God, it's a bit of crap, isn't it? This that is, is crap of... because I often do iron them up on the windows and it oh. could happen. What about this one? Did you hear about the idiot who bought a pair of water skis? Now he's looking for a lake with a slope. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that. That's all right. <laughs> it ain't bad. Mm. Two piece jigsaw one was the best one. The one you didn't get. <laughs> yeah, the one I didn't get. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 throw, I'll, I'll throw I'll throw I'll throw a one liner out there as far as idiots are concerned. So uh my friend thinks he is so smart. He told me an onion is the only food that makes you cry. So I threw a coconut at his face. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It just sounds vindictive. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's good, though. I like it. <laughs> that, that's how you test a scientific theory, right? <laughs> Somebody makes a statement. You do research. Present your conclusions, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the onion is technically not the only food that can make you cry. Turns mm -hmm. out, turns out a pineapple hitting you the, hitting you in the face at 90 miles an hour does just <laughs> the same trick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charles, Arthias with Sirius. What do we got going on here? Okay, so you may remember Artus was from Istanbul in Turkey. We had Free Your Mind, which we all really enjoyed and liked last year. Long song that was just masterful in, in electronica field. And uh, this one, it really was good. And uh, uh, it's a serious, this song, seriously, a serious is um not a techno song with ordinary rhythms uh it's a project designed to awaken humanity either high frequencies hey right? um okay um this stuff anyway i'll, I'll just i'll just cut the, cut the comments because i'm so mindful of this now we've got ole skeet ole another ole 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 says yes this that's it and crazy w says Nice. Nice. You only want two comments? That's what you get. Yep, yep. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Got to cut you off at that at that point. <laughs> yeah. That's painful. No, well, you're the one that wants to keep this, but I had to share this artwork. That's just yes. you know, I'm so glad you did because I, yeah. I had a comment about the artwork. Uh I like that artwork a lot. Yes, good. Just ripping that, just ripping that iris out of the uh out of the eyeball and the end. That is or putting it in. Mm. Or putting it in, yeah. 
Mm. One way or one way or the other, uh, you know, it works but both. Also, the hand looks as though it's like severed right at the wrist there. I don't know if you can oh, see. Oh, so it does. Mm. Interesting. I do like it. It's like made of parts. Aren't we all? Yeah, just, I, I I like the fact that we have the you know we have the blue tones, then we have the brown eyes, and we obviously there's a little bit of lens flare on the eye and everything like that. It's, oh, must be JJ Abrams. <laughs> it must be. <laughs> it must be JJ Abrams. Yeah, but I do like I do I do like this artwork, and I do remember Free Your Mind. We had uh, we did love that one. Um, that was a great song. So I'm expecting nothing less from this one, unless Carl's been disappointing me so far. This uh, Charles, I should say, has been. <laughs> has been disappointing me uh, so far this show um so hopefully yeah. hopefully hopefully this is going to be a song that i could put a plus mark next to oh. none of that's happened yet so mm. you know, and i'm not in a bad mood or anything like that either so i'm actually in a good mood it's just like <laughs> this is tom in a good mood <laughs> <laughs> i think you'll like this are this with Sirius, also available on Spotify and YouTube. Check it out there as well. But for right now, let's check it out here as our fourth track on the underground set. This destruction is not beautiful. Humans. It's a global scale violence. Humans. We lost the beginning. Humans. And there seems to be no end.
Where'd he go? No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, it's just I leaning back in the chair, and I wasn't, I wasn't following the waveform. So for our last electronica song, we went with Smart Monkey for this electronica song. We shall go with Carlos Fandango. Ooh, and and sorry, Charles, 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 damn it. Charles, oh, forget it. I'm off. No, forget it. Yeah, I looked. Yeah, I thought you were going to go to Smart Monkey, but obviously you see me as the, the electronic expert of the two of us, which is great. You know, thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, no, Sirius is seriously good. Oh, I knew that was I'm good. glad you came to me first to get all my corny jokes out of the way. But um, I noticed you both listened on your monitor speakers and quite rightly so it's an interesting track and a good one it's not unlike free your mind it's like almost like free your mind part two but about the planet and you know things that are happening uh possibly so um <clears throat> get the this me the way the arps the arpeggiators and the pulses are used you know he plays around with the octaves and the pitch bends and things um and it's combined with pad synths which give it a dreamy spacey atmosphere uh, like you're looking at the Earth from a distance, like there's some sort of android robot sort of talking about humans, like a head teacher sort of scolding its pupils. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's um, it pulls you in for the ride from the get go, like free your mind did, and does, and it holds you there. It, it captivates. It hypnotizes. Uh, it's reminiscent of the kind of and I've, this is a compliment here. It's reminiscent of the kind of visual music that Smart Monkey makes, was what I made in my comments. Um, Art who hasn't responded, of course, but <laughs> uh, but it is a, absolutely a masterful lesson in production control, you know, control of the song, push and pull, and and flow and you know, ebb and flow uh, in elect electronic music. It really is, um, and. I really like Artus, and it's a definite top three contender. This one. I mean, well, for me, we we can end the show right here if you guys want to, but I'll let Smart Monkey take it away. So. Well, I got to agree with a lot of those comments. Um, I do have one critique of this track, which I'll come back to, but let's go with all the positives. Um, right from the outset, the moment this track started it oozed quality and it grabbed me right in that very initial part um and it it starts it, it starts on this journey but let's come to the critique part here and now because if i was to follow this 
this tune in in that kind of sequential way there's this vocal that comes in shortly after the intro that i did not like and i want it i just don't want it there it's very much a very generic edm style um vocal female vocal that thankfully is only in it for a very short amount of time and i just felt that even that one vocal wasn't particularly well mixed compared to the rest it was muffled it just felt out of context with the rest of the track so let's get that out of the way because the rest of the track is absolutely beautiful it is a perfect piece of electronica in my in my personal opinion it harks to all of my heroes of the day you've got shades of angelis in there you've got shades of georgia Moroda in there you've got hans zimmer elements in there they're all there this this artist has taken all of those um influences i feel and yet at the same time still brought it very contemporary and very now uh, still made it something you know modern and, and 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 of the of this moment um such a sci-fi piece of of music that if we take that horrible little edm vocal bit off the front the rest of it is so good all of it's like robotic feel and ai feel to it um definitely one from for my top three definitely um I did find that maybe a little bit overproduced in places, but that could just be me and, and the way I've got my setup. I just found it a little bit boomy in, in one or two places, just maybe bring them down. I'd have to compare it in a mix with other playlisted tracks. But, you know, could this sit on a sci-fi film? Absolutely. Is this not a really styly, styly, stylistic piece of sci-fi music? It definitely is. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Boy, you talked for a while there, and this is my response to you, Smart Monkey. <laughs> Mr. Madison, what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> Yay! Rob's got one as well now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, wait a second. You guys shifted. I got to move my Charles sticker over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. I have, oh, yeah. I, I, I have like one word of response this year because I'm just, I, I was just, I was just kind of like kicking back, relaxing, and listening to this entire thing. So you got vocals, effects, incidental sounds, buildups. Um, so we got this camera shutter sound kind of like effect to it. Then I just wrote, this is hot. We got flange effects. We got the we got the uh, low frequency bypass. I said this is movie worthy. This is show worthy. And as simplistic as it is, humans always make the same mistakes. It's just you know it really fit in there for me. Every every single part of this song, I love it. This is. This is, I can guarantee this is going to be my top for today. This is going to be my number one. Yeah. And oh, last. Yes. Apart from that horrible little edm -y bit of bloody. You want me to play it again? I know what you mean. I do know what you mean about that vocal, but yeah. What Didn't would you like put it. in its place? Just not have it at all. Just miss that bit out together. The track is solid. It didn't need it. It had its own life. It was going on this journey, just didn't. Need. In fact, oddly enough, I felt that if I was to be listening this to this track and not giving it the justice of listening all the way through, I might have turned off at that point because I thought it was going into a sort of EDM-y, housey, very yeah, generic, it's generic sort of, yeah, which it's okay. not. It's far from it. And it just didn't fit for me. Just didn't so you fit. think it was a little out of context? Yeah, take that bit out. It didn't even sound like it was even mixed in as well as the rest. Mm. I don't know if it was an afterthought or what, but are you are you talking about where I wrote down the the kind of like the uh, low frequency bypass? Do, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Play. Can we play it again a minute? Of course. And I'll show you where it comes in. We can do whatever the hell we want, man. 
six well, seven, well uh, peeing that track up i will say this needs an ai video that's what i'm going to say because it does need an ai vid to complement the song to accompany it get past the intro but yeah probably where you are there now we can buy like right here well, well let's just here we go it's still sounding really good yeah Good. That, that bit of vocal there, that female vocal. Okay. If I had a, ch so I've got my channels all lined up here, right? I've got all my layered tracks going on, and I bring in that vocal. No, I. I, Just, I, I I'm picking. I'm picking. I'm definitely picking up what you're putting down now. That 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 uh, that we listen to it real time and we're actually talking about it together. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I would cut that out as well. Yeah, turn that one off. But but you the whole, the perfect but, track. But, but the whole thing is is so minimalistic, and it's so far at the beginning of the song. That mm. it, yeah, that it really doesn't bother me. Because, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't really have much relevance to the rest of the track. Yeah, let's. Let's skip past it and let's just go on enjoying the track for for what it is. Honestly, yeah, absolutely. If I was <sighs> if I was an artist, I would say just switch that one off, that one channel off. Do another take. I reckon it would be absolutely perfect. That would have been just fine with the beat alone. Yeah, absolutely. That whole yeah. intro that yeah. you could have gone on that number of bars without that vocal and still been equally, in fact, probably more powerful in my opinion. No, no, I, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think that yeah, vocal, yeah, I think the vocal tees up the message. So, no, I don't think it does. Well, I think the lyrics of that vocal do. I mean, whether you say it, do it as the same vocal as appears later, the robot sort of droid android thing. I, I, I kind of get what you're saying about the lyrics themselves, but you've got to listen to it in a context of, of its musical form. And to me, it's just unnecessary. And the whole of the rest of the track could have existed perfectly well without it and, and probably would exist better without it at all, in my personal opinion. I think possibly if you replaced it with the same notes, but with an instrument sort of drifting through those notes, that would be a fair replacement. I know you could do it without was... it, but I do think it needs something in there just to build it up. Maybe, was, but not that vocal. I, I, I was about to say the same thing because whether we do four bars or whether we, we do another eight bars, right? Well, we could we could do like maybe like a kind of like a like just for sake of argument here, like a violin kind of like effect, yeah, kind of like note going on here or something like that, aside from the vocals. So I I do I do take your point, but the whole thing is is that so when you listen to the song in its entirety, it's so minimal that I just completely fucking forgot about it. It's, it's just it really didn't bother me. I'm, I'm you know I'm glad that you picked up on. It. Well, now you're going to make me hate the song. <laughs> yeah, that's it, though. That is it. Yeah. So it's part of me that really, really is unhappy that it's in there. And I would personally take it out. No, because, another, because, another take. because you're, you're you're right where the vocals sound like they are drowned in the mix. It just kind of like seems like it's out of place a little bit. So absolutely. Now, and you've got such polish on the rest and that bit just sounds. And not only even if you polish those vocals, it just sounds so generic and almost like EDM ish that you would go. No, this track is more worthy than that. Take it out and let this whole track live in its own. I got it's it's funny because because Carl sort of compared it to to some of my music and I'm really particular about stuff like that and I would be going no 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 that just doesn't do this track it's just this track has its own life form and yeah that's here's here's funny. here's what I have to think about this and and um and I'm just gonna paint the picture here okay <clears throat> so um we're we're hanging out in a nightclub for whatever reason our fucking old asses we're hanging out in a fucking nightclub okay and we have the laser lights going and we have you know the big bass booming on the speakers and it's just like boom 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 i mean the club is just thumping right i don't think that we're going to be paying attention to that especially if you know we have like five or six drinks behind us as well then oddly enough i would and i think that what you have just said is perfect the perfect example let that track 
breathe organically in its own right doesn't need that bit because it is about to evolve into something that's even going to get you going even more in a nightclub you know so mm -hmm. it's just my take of it i i still i still think i still think that the rest of this track was was just got mm. near perfection mm -hmm. on oh, yeah. you yeah. know i i I, I, really, I mean i had i had such visual shit going on with this you know what i mean which is what i was talking about just laser lights strobe lights i mean there was just yep. there was just robots walking around you know like 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 even if you took uh, you know will smith's movie i robot and just kind of like you know like kind of like divvied it up like like the one thing that you did with with uh with mustafa's song that one time and you and you yeah, put yeah. all the stuff behind it like if you took this song and did it with with like clips of i robot where the robots were actually like like you know like kind of like becoming evil and everything like that right spoiler alert no fuck you this fucking movie was released back in like 2000 or something like that yeah. you've had 24 years to watch it fuck off and i've actually seen it so <laughs> yes. oh my god that's even more of a surprise charles good film, good film. but then the book's good as well but the shades of blade runner in this the shades of like blade actually not just blade or blade you know you've got that nightclub element that could something sinister could be going on it's very well, visual. I, well i mean e e even if you take the cave scene in the matrix uh what was it um um reloaded the matrix reloaded the second one when they when they actually made it to zion and then morpheus had made the big speech and then everybody started dancing like this song being in the background for that wouldn't be you know a far stretch for the imagination and everything like that you know so uh that's that's why i wrote down it's movie worthy it is show worthy and it, it's this is a hot song but i'm glad that we talked about that yeah because yeah that one, that one yeah it could be cut out although it doesn't although it doesn't bother me because it's so early on i'd love it just turn that because it's definitely on one channel in his mixing desk turn it off record it again and let me know how it feels yeah. <laughs> still think overall good song mm. yep definitely oh, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm still keeping this in my number one spot until told otherwise by the uh by the uh, second half of the show that we got going on here so we're going to start our 20 minute break here folks thank you for joining us for this first half of the underground sound we do hope that you'll stick around for the second half of the underground sound i am dj exec with me as always is charles and smart together we are putting the us back into music <laughs> I don't know what I was doing there, but <laughs> right, this is still your bit here. So, oh, do, 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 I so lost you just so you just weren't paying attention to me like at a, all. So, I was just itching my armpit and I think I just zoned out. That's not right, your I'll, armpit, I'll, I'll that's your so, please do like us, subscribe, and share, and we'll find the music <laughs> that you love to hear. Oh, you did it so well. Yeah, I, I don't know what your bit is, so uh, I'll do it. I'll do your bit. Uh, and so do really do uh, the other things. And there's a heart thing there. And, you know, the heart can be like a bell, but it's not like a bell. It's also like a heart. And if you do love us, then click that. And if there isn't one of them, click this. And, yeah, there you go. <laughs> something like that. Click click something. Click something <laughs> wherever wherever you're at. <laughs> we'll be back in 20 minutes. Enjoy. Oh, oh, I forgot the joke as well. Oh no! Okay, go ahead. Destroying the German lines of communication. This is called. <laughs> a man tells. This is in the World War. That's World War. A man tells a friend. My father was a soldier in the First World War. He single-handedly destroyed the German lines of communication. Oh, what did he do? Asked the friend. Sorry. Oh, what did he do? Asked the friend. He ate their pigeon. Says the man. Uh, it's just getting bad, isn't it? Don't want to. Bad. Well, it's not, it's not getting better. <laughs> it's not getting better. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not gonna say that it's getting bad, but it's not getting better. I've got better one for later, I think. The monk and the vow of silence. I'll say that on later. It's a long one, okay? So save that one. Save it, saved. Okay. saved. Did, you, did you click the save then? Did you? Yeah. yeah. I clicked the save on the book. Whenever your ex says you'll never find someone like me, the answer to that is that's the point. <laughs> that, was, I mean, that is quite good, actually, to be fair. It is good. <laughs> that's pretty good, yeah, clever. More than a shitty I've been elephant. It's a while. It's <laughs> like the juice one. 
still trying to work that one out. And in fact, so stupid am I that I've put number four, number four. <laughs> so I better do number five next after four. I'm a real mayor tonight. I'll leave you to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> just, that was just nonsensical, man. Yeah, I think it's that champagne. It's gone right to my head. <laughs> I obviously don't drink champagne very often, so. No, well, you know what? I think I think maybe it was the fact that it was flat champagne. So if you have any kind of like, uh, if you have any carbonated champagne, I think that you need to, uh, I think that you need to open that bottle. You should still be celebrating your wedding, man. It's Scotty G laced champagne. <laughs> oh my goodness, mate. Uh, well, there's. I also had. <laughs> there was a small bottle of prosecco in the uh, in tiny bottle, you know. So, uh, in the. Uh, oh. Is it tiny or is it just holding no, it away from the camera? It's about average, I think. You know this, isn't it? <laughs> Hold it closer, it'll look bigger. Let me just just check. Uh, yeah, it's about average. Uh, so it's it's um yeah a little bottle of prosecco was sitting there for ages. So I thought I'd have that as well. Oh, so you drank that too. Yeah, but there's only a tiny bit of champagne, one glass of champagne and right. one small glass, was well, a glass of Prosecco. <laughs> you don't even say glass. <laughs> <laughs> Next one on the stout, though, I think. Number six, be seeing you. Is that is, is a small bottle of champagne? Is a little bottle of Prosecco? Uh, just a glass. Glass is all that, just glass. I mean, it was a half it was, it was, it was a glass. You know, you reminded me, Rob, when you were talking about when you were talking like that. There's this obviously, I, I don't expect you to know who Harry Carey is, but uh, um, so Will Will Ferrell used to do a, a, an impression of him on, on, on Saturday Night Live, and it just automatically just, you just reminded me of that because it's just really, you think, like the strong guy is talking about baseball. I mean, he's going, it's just, it's just fucking completely <laughs> drunk. Yeah. Well, maybe I should continue with the champagne. We have got more champagne in the. I uh, think you should. I think. Well, there be... you go. There you go. go, go. <laughs> An go. interesting journey by the end of the show. Yeah. All right. Go chill some in the freezer for the next twenty minutes. Remember to take it out before you before Ooh, you get back to the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Carl, I mean we've done so many shows, haven't we? But Carl's never got totally pissed. But I wonder if he is one of those ones that if you let him really, really let. Let loose by the end of the show, he's naked. <laughs> oh, never that no. no, no, Carl's too reserved for that. Oh, uh, they're always Still the worst, reserved. they're always yeah. the worst. Yeah, I, I, I don't get leery or violent or anything, just get chilled out and relaxed and tired. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just Absolutely. Absolutely. there's nothing violent about taking your clothes off and running around naked. <laughs> on what you're doing at the it time all depends on the location <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> you know at a party no absolutely not um in a school zone you know there might be a problem <laughs> yes, yes <laughs> uh, you know so like i said it all depends on the on the uh, on the location for that one so yeah but Carl's probably one of those ones that's never realised he's actually got that drunk because he can never remember. He's woken up the next day going, yeah, it was a bit of a boring night, really. <laughs> Everybody else is like, Jesus, Carl, what did you do? <laughs> it's like, shit, I fell asleep at 9.30. He's <laughs> in the kids' playground as well. I've got, not got a huge point, so I think that may be you know, my... <laughs> Depends how cold it is, but yeah, I've got a huge uh, circle of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to them, it's just a man running through in pink pajamas. <laughs> That's my skin, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unironed pink pajamas. <laughs> I don't think he was naked. <laughs> they were flapping around a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Ill-fitting pink pajamas, <laughs> quite round pajamas, <laughs> rotund but lovely ass. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be we'll be back to discuss that more on the second half of the underground show. So enjoy the break. We'll be with you shortly. <laughs>
Hell we <clears throat> two and one and there we go. Okay. Lots of noise. Oh boy. All right, we'll just wait on monkey again. I'm here. I am here. It just takes a while for the camera to pop up. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, my other speakers. Oh, there was an observation that Susie made. She she was on YouTube and saw that the live stream had gone on, <laughs> and she just happened to say, "Hasn't Tom got really small hands?" I said, <laughs> "So I don't think you have, but it might be the camera angle at the time." Big hands, see, look, big hands. Oh, I suppose the further they go back and the nearer you are. Yeah, that's about average and it's about normal. I don't know, maybe the rest of you's big. Your hands are normal. Yeah, could be. Can have a fat head, that could be. <laughs> could be. Yeah, I said, um, I don't think so. I've never noticed if Tom's got tiny hands or anything, but. Yes, now it looks tiny. Yes, it's the yeah, angle. I was like back here. <laughs> yeah, you must have been doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Just scratch my head. <laughs> I don't know when you were doing that though. <laughs> Hey, hello. No, I, I definitely, I definitely wasn't. It's just maybe it's like I'm animated sometimes when I talk, right? So you know, get the get the hand motion going. It's the speed. That's that's what it is. It's, <laughs> <speed. laughs> it's like chop, 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 chop. Ah. martial artist. Yeah. yeah. So unlike Charles, who's a marital artist, indeed. Whatever that might be, yes. I have no idea what that meant. That's why I didn't even comment on it. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it actually means to be a marital artist, but. Well, I suppose. Good at, good at marriage? Well, I can't say I am, though. No, it doesn't mean that, does it? No, I don't know what it means either. <laughs> no idea there. Yeah. Uh, so anyone who might be able to help us out with that kind of category, just put it in the comments down below. A marital artist. Hmm. There we go. Even though I came up with it, I feel quite embarrassed that I came up with it. Now. Without a good reason for it. There was something else that she said that I thought I must say something. Uh, that maybe that was it. Tiny hands and a tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. when having small hands comes in handy, I suppose. Yes. Literally. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Charles didn't like that one, but oh boy. <laughs> Yo, mama, so ugly she made a happy meal cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's decent. That's just fighting talk now, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to print some of these things up because I'm not like Carl and buys like a whole bunch of books and everything like that and off the off the uh, secondhand shop or whatever it is that you call it over there. The what is it? The charity shop? Charity. Charity shop? No. Yeah, charity shop. Yeah, you said charity shop. So you I thought you said it. cherry shop. I thought, no, nah, it's not cherry shop. <laughs> It's a charity, charity shop. shop, so you corrected him with charity but, shop. But what do you get hanging from a cherry tree? Cherries. Sore arms. My friend told me I had the my, my friend told me he had the body of a Greek god. I had to explain it to him that Buddha was not Greek. <laughs> Uh, what's round and bad tempered? You <laughs> <laughs> and a vicious circle, <laughs> <laughs> and the insults continue. <laughs> He's gonna stop oh, off for a bit. He's gonna do a <laughs> Mac and Roe throw his right yeah. hand. I've had enough, <laughs> and I'll be serious. <laughs> Okay, what's green and has wheels? Oh my god, are you not gonna give us the punchline to the other joke? <laughs> well, no, I did. Did you? I said and a vicious circle. 
So what's, what's oh. as well as me, what's round and bad tempered? A vicious circle. Okay. What's green and has wheels? Kermit the Frog on a motorcycle. <laughs> Grass. I lied about the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's horrible. I don't even know if I could. I don't know if I could do this one on the live stream. Well, then I think you have to now. <laughs> I don't think that I can. <laughs> <laughs> all right well we'll try it if if the live stream cuts off on you guys it's because of this joke here so <laughs> why doesn't mexico have an olympic team <laughs> I don't know why. because because everybody that can run jump and swim are already in the united states <laughs> dear, oh dear oh dear <laughs> That's contemporary. <laughs> oh, well, we're still streaming live, so hey, <laughs> welcome back to the second half of the Underground Sound here. Oh boy! So, is there anything that I think I need to get to immediately here? Oh, I forgot to say to you, I'm, I'm, I'm now. I decided to use up stuff to, rather than open a new bottle of champagne. I decided to use up the old uh, spiced rum liqueur. So at the moment, I've got cream soda with it, but I've got some zero Coca Cola. But I want to tell you, I've got a new jigger for singles and up. Oh, Tom's gone. <laughs> He's left. He's left. He's like, this is so boring. <laughs> I'm gone. But I've got a new jigger. So it's a single shot, double shot. Always double wanted shot. one. Yeah, I've got one then. Yeah, They're always good. wanted one. They are good. But I, always I can't see anything out of them, but it's, it's the, one thing you're gonna find, the one thing you're going to find is just no point in having the single shot. <laughs> <laughs> you may as well just have the double shot for everything. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right, babe. I, I mean, the amount I poured into the glass, yeah, it was definitely more than a single shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, I, I hardly ever use a single shot. I'll no. probably actually only ever use it to start with, and that's it, because yeah, you know, I normally just, just put a slug in. Not a slug, but a slug of drinking. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, you know, I just fancied one, though. It just, just looked good, didn't it? It just, just feels good to have a jigger. Yeah, and it's good. called a jigger, so jigger, jigger. Like the old yellow song. Yeah. Bom, bom, jigger, have you jigger. watched that yet? What's that? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, is that in that? Yes. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that now. <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently... The no, I will do, but it's up in the loft. So Yeah, uh, this up in the loft there's things called uh let me think about this a technology these days streaming oh i thought you meant ladders <laughs> to get the loft. Well, yeah there is ladders as well probably enough really? yeah i could stream but um it's easy well it's not easy but <laughs> i might as i've got it already upstairs i might as well just get the thing out of the box but i'll get around to it when we go up there next wait 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 wait, wait 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 you have it upstairs the loft is up. well. We have an upstairs. Yeah. We're not in a bungalow, but no, no, no. but but I said you have the movie upstairs in the loft. I've never heard of the movie upstairs. Uh, what's it like? Oh my god! <laughs> you have Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes. Upstairs. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think so. But you've never watched it. Never. Well, I might have watched it years ago. I don't remember it much. I'm so, so Susie has the same opinion as me on that one. That. We feel like we've probably watched it years ago and thought it was okay at the time. You need to rewatch it. I know you said that. <laughs> um, and we've also got the other ones you mentioned as well up there, which was True Romance and Busty Babes from <laughs> Busty Babes. Debbie Does Dallas. Yeah, yeah. that one. All the classics, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, All the classics, yes. And the other one with the cutting the ear off thing. Debbie was certainly a busy girl. 
<laughs> she was, wasn't she? <laughs> but you said that at the point where you said about cutting the ears off. I was like, I don't remember that very well. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Debbie does Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called Van Gogh in England? Van Gogh? Oh, some people say Van Gogh, but um, I think it's wrong. I'm sure it's Van Gogh. Van Gogh. But it might be Van Gogh. I just... That's a very it. personal... But I think they're wrong. <laughs> <Yes>. Much <laughs> well, like Jalapenos. <laughs> Genghis Khan. Now called Genghis Khan. And Bodicea, who's now called Boudicca. There's lots of things that people sort of seem to have disagreements over. Names. Carl and Charles. <laughs> mm. No. Charles, your wife, Charles, Charles, Charles is just a funny joke for this. <laughs> for this uh for this episode since Sizzle oh, I, 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 I take you Charles. <laughs> yeah, she went to say it as well. Char Carl. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Charcoal. Maybe it's charcoal. <laughs> you don't no, you don't particularly look charcoalish, man. Who? Racist. <laughs> it wasn't racist. <laughs> but maybe she was using a bit of cockney rhyming slam for arsehole. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's very possible. Yeah, yeah, it could have been Walsh for dickhead, man. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was already said in those first few that's lines that you spoke that he didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what they said there, could have been anything. <laughs> I hope it was favorable, though. I really do. <laughs> uh, wasn't good. Well, it might be good. It was good. The whole thing was good. Yes, what I like about Welsh, though, is that you got a lot of um unconceivable words that you don't understand but every now and then a proper english word will come out of it as well so yes. like at the point where it said dickhead it probably was <laughs> what's dickhead <laughs> Baldy cunt. oh i was going to say I, I did promise you i'd show you my ring at some point <laughs> maybe when we go out for a night out and we get drunk <laughs> i get naked I will show oh, you my that, ring properly. Is that where you have your ring? Yeah, you know. But uh, it's got a nice pattern on it. But um, yes, and it's the weird thing, isn't it? Because women will be asked, the bride will be asked about, you know, let's see your rings and you know, engagement ring and stuff. But very rarely does the groom get asked, can I see your ring? <laughs> All that kind of thing. So it's a weird thing, isn't it? That you don't get asked about your own ring. Your finger's going a bit blue on the end of that ring, though. <laughs> oh, do you know what Scotty G did the other day? Uh, because I don't tend to take off my wedding ring once it's on, it's there, it's commitment until I got divorced last time. And um, <laughs> actually, the ring broke, it sort of snapped slightly. Um, but um, he said, Oh, does, does it come off easily? So I sort of like you went, You know, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I suppose it does reasonably, not too hard. And I said, Ah, oh, damn, already you've got me taking my ring off. He's Cunning fellow, that fellow. <laughs> so he's, he's leading me astray already. <laughs> okay, <laughs> taking my ring. Well, get me to take one because he said, you know, you know, go on a night out or something, you know, take a ring off and hope it doesn't show. <laughs> there you go. It's bad. Okay, <laughs> but I'm not like that, you see. Yeah, after that thrilling conversation, yeah, um, that'll be edited out, I'm sure. At a sense, with make me feel what's going on here, Charles, right. Ah, oh, what did you call them? Addisons. That's what it looks like to me, Addisons. Oh, I was looking at those a decents. Oh, it might be Addisons, yeah. What do you reckon, to, uh, Rob? I reckon it says um, Aden, Adechenchi. Adechenchi. Well, I can tell you that they're from Fowl Shopping in Sverige, which is Sweden. So, um, Adechenchi. Like I said, yeah, the ginger, then, yeah. Uh, what have people said? Well, I'll pick out two good comments, which is Primordial Alien says, I'm really happy people are still dwelling in this genre for real. FR, uh, I genuinely dig the F out of this, and he actually says F rather than fuck. So, uh, that was nice to refrain from the swearing, I thought. <laughs> and, <laughs> <might not> <laughs> yeah. and Wes Herndon, that's it, that's I, it. that was two, that was two, that was two. That's, that's one comment. That was two. That's one. You just you just told me two different people with two different comments. No. 
<laughs> and Wes Hurston says, dude, I'm doing karate kid slash rocky slash snow skiing exercise montage listening to this. Definitely got that vibe. Good job. So see what you think if it's a montage type of montage type of track. Also, oh, so is this like Scotty's favorite song, like Eye of the Tiger? Oh, oh, it's not like well, it's not dissimilar in some respects. It's a sort of 80s retro rock sort of sound. Well, I know Scotty loves that one. Scotty loves Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. That's it's only because it's been overplayed, but it's, it's a great song. Because he oh, likes to do the old uh, boxing moves, doesn't he? I reckon so, yeah. yeah. Skipping. Again, 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 this was this was the same argument that I had with Susie. Is like uh, until I actually see Susie in person or on the show, I'm not going to believe they exist. Scotty G at this moment to me is just a figment of your imagination. He's an artificial yeah. intelligence thing that you made up. It's a shorter, uh, thinner version of yourself. <laughs> that <laughs> hates. Oh, that hates so I have many compliments tonight. <laughs> I've given Scotty plenty of compliments. <laughs> I've said he, I've said he's a handsome devil for crying out loud. Yes, you have. Yes, yes. And uh, <laughs> where, I, where I've called you a cunt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not me. Not me. But the AI thing. Mm. Oh called, yes, that did it, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was. Yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, uh, one of our listeners said, female listeners said he had dulcet tones. Which was interesting. Well, please explain for those that don't know what dulcet means. A dulcet tones is just where you got a sort of nice, uh, attractive timbre to your voice or something. I, I'm not convinced, but everyone's entitled to their opinion, of course. So, you know, but uh, you know, she thought he had dulcet tones, so we won't knock it. Because oh, no, 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 I just listen education is good no we will be bringing back a bit more svt scott's vocal therapy in the next volume or two because we've obviously not done it for quite a few volumes and he needs a bit more uh tightening up with the old vocal training and confidence okay. so we'll see it, it'll be good though well with uh with, with that in mind i still say that i'm syllabalizing this so i'm just saying Addis addison's Addison's with Make Me Feel. Let's check it out.
That was Make Me Feel by Addison's. I still think it's Addison's. I'm, I'm sticking to it. So, Carlos Fernagam. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, Adekin K. Um, I think well, quite a good, <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite a good actor. Uh, no, I, yeah, I think it might be Addison's or a decent. I, I do think there might be a decent in there. Who knows? But the song itself make me feel well. <clears throat> I think Wes Herndon probably hit the nail on the head with the montage thing, with that sort of uh, 80s movie montage feel, Brack Pack feel film, film feel, uh, Stranger Things 80s retro TV drama type feel. It's definitely sort of captured that spirit of the, the synth rock spirit of the 80s. It's not, you know, like an outstanding track, but it's very listenable, fairly radio friendly. Um, yeah, not modern radio friendly type thing, but you know, sort of retro vibes. It will feature, no doubt, on the We Love Rock and Roll show at some point because it's you know got a nice um, sort of positive vibe about it. I would say really, but uh, the but the vocals. The only thing that has got mon more modern sensibilities is with the singing, and that's I just cannot place the vocal sound. It feels like somebody I've heard in the last ten years or so. I can't think who. Maybe one of you two will help me out here. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, not an outstanding track, but a, a solid, okay, good track, and I quite like it. You know, the feel of it's good, so it's good. Oh, well, smart monkey, Robert. What's the use, sir? Yeah, I think you know this song is definitely done in a particular genre of that eighties <clears throat> rock. It's been done so purposefully. Um. The vocal delivery of it is bang on that sort of era and of course it you know it just feels so cinematic as a result of that that you could see it being in a bruckheimer film or lost boys or yeah. top gun you know you got you got all these films that that gs uh lived on tracks like this they were very anthemic and this has that that style to it it's you know it's a really nice production. It's really good. It's solid. You know, okay, it's a, harking back to a uh, an era where, um, well, actually, to be fair, it's harking back to an era where production was pretty solid. To be fair, anyway, and this is this has that kind of solid production quality to it. Um, is it everybody's star right now? No, pr probably not. But for those that love that 80s rock this is doing a really solid um uh, anthem to it not anthem what am i trying to think of but you know the gesture is there it's really really good and fans of 80s rock will love this i think um is it going to make my top three probably not because we've had some really other solid tracks and and certain different styles of tracks whereas this is almost a bit generic in its in its 80s theme but I, i'm not going to underestimate the the sort of production qualities and performance qualities on this it was it was it was a good track so well done at the gen j <laughs> <laughs> yeah if, if if you if you want to get back to us and let us know exactly how to pronounce that we'll be happy we'll be uh we'll be happy to listen to that of course and and um and then we'll Obviously, you know, it's your kind of like a retort and continuance on, on you know, future episode, whatever. So, um, uh, well, this is definitely, this is definitely like, especially like kind of like Rocky Four, like Rocky Four, that that really gave me that kind of like, um, that Rocky montage. He's training, he's really getting redder, really getting redder. <laughs> yeah. Hot and sweaty. Yes, he's got, he's got high blood pressure at this point. So, he's really getting redder. <laughs> As the other bloke smacks him around the face, yes. it's red. Yes. No, he's really getting ready for this for this big fight with an opponent that's obviously you know tougher than him, much stronger than him, and everything more like Russian that. Russian than you know? him, but yeah, more Russian than him, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you know, but but Rocky being the um, the man that he is, you know, he always comes through. He's the underdog, right? So he's the uh, he's he ends up being the big boy with everything. So it's kind of like reminding me of kind of like gonna fly now, which um, I don't know who. Um, who actually wrote that one but that was bill conti was it bill I'm, I'm, I'm not saying bill conti i'm saying bill conti bill conti right i <laughs> was that was gonna fly now because right yeah so but um 
so I know it's Vince Decola, which wrote the Rocky IV um, uh, montage theme. And it's, I think it's literally just called Training Montage. Oh. I think that that's the actual name of this. So, I wonder where they got that title from. Yeah, it's imaginative. Doesn't make mm. any sense, does it? Mm. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Um, so here's my big problem with the song is even though it, it does sound like like it's uh, you know very much appropriated in the um, in the '80s style music and everything like that, it seems to be a lot of treble in here, right? It seems like anything that was low end got cut out. And so it just really sounds just kind of like, I, for me at least, it kind of like seemed like kind of like static going the whole way through. So you didn't, now, 80s drums were a lot different, right? Because 80s drums not there, especially with this type of music, there were, there were a lot of bands that were using electronic drums. They weren't using like actual proper drum sets. Like you know, like Metallica, Guns N' Roses, whatever the case may be, right? They weren't using like actual proper drum sets. They were using these electronic drums, which were which were just basically pads that were hooked up into a mixer, and then and then and then they made like certain sounds. So in that defense, I'm just going to say that that maybe that that's what it was. But this sounds just like a lot of treble. There wasn't like a lot of low end in this one here. So we we had guitar, we had keyboard, we had the drums, and we had all that stuff, right? But we really didn't have a lot of low end stuff going on. So there there was no proper kind of like bass guitar going on here or anything like that, which could actually accentuate some of the um, some of the low end stuff going on here. So that's my beef with this one is that the um, the production of this really kept it on the high notes on the uh, on the production. So I just think that it all kind of like started to kind of like swerve together, especially when you started to think about the rocky montages and the um and all that other kind of stuff like the better off dead and like the uh you know like the um like the 80s movies wherever there was some kind of like some sort of competition going on where this type of music was was definitely warranted um that's where i think that it just started to lose me a little bit so overall i gotta say decent um am i gonna play list it not necessarily you know um because I don't work out like Rocky. I'm not going to find like, you know, a random tire in my backyard and start jumping around with it on my back and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Fish so, and chickens. Yeah. yeah you, what you're trying to say is you resent this song. You resent this song because it I makes you, it makes people run upstairs. What you're trying to say is you, start you're more point. inclined to choke the chicken than chase the chicken. <laughs> uh, indeed. 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 Really yeah, that's an interesting concept. What is a choke the chicken song then? That's let's see okay. if we can find oh, one of them. I've I really can't imagine that being a choke the chicken song. I'm just watching the motions here. It's not a bad pace, is it? Let me just turn my back. No, no, no. It definitely helps. I got. I got. I got to think that that Charles's uh, theme song for choking the chicken would be uh, the Benny Hill theme song, just because it's just oh. it's an accident waiting Let's to think. happen. Let's think. <laughs> yeah, it's quite fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was it. It literally finished. That's <laughs> enough. Do you know that's called Yakety Sax? Just a little factoid for you. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, Yakety Sax. Blackety uh, sex, yeah, <laughs> empty sex. <laughs> well, when you're done, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, there we are. It's finished. <laughs> Fantastic. That's a job. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Uh, did you did you hear about the two bald guys that put their heads together? No. Mm. They made an ass out of themselves. <laughs> I'm sure one. Rob will know about that. Rob's got Rob's got a nice head of hair for an elderly gentleman. Thank you very much. I'll just peel it off a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's only Velcroed on there. Rob will fucking break a hip quicker than he will lose his fucking hair. Like, seriously. What the hell's going on with this shit? It's, it's annoying, isn't it? It is. Some people are so well, youthful. That's... Oh, I had one already, already for you. I don't remember where it is. Sorry, I'll come back to you. What, you picked those other last ones? They weren't random picks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, specifically I went. They weren't that's a good one for the show. They weren't particularly random, but uh, oh, where's it gone? Oh, here it is. Open the book to any this page. One's, this one's called "Your Next." A man gets home early from work and finds his wife in bed with his own best friend. Right, that's it. He says, pulling out a gun, going to his bedroom bedside drawer. He pulls out the gun, points at his own head, uh, <laughs> and at this point, his wife starts laughing. Hysterically, sure. <laughs> he says, I don't know what you're laughing for. You're next. <laughs> I said it badly, actually. It wasn't how it was written. <laughs> yeah, it didn't sound quite right, but no. we've got the gist of the joke. A man is, this is called flight delay. A man is sitting on a plane that has been waiting to take off for two hours. He calls over to the stewardess to ask why the flight is delayed. I'm sorry, sir, says the stewardess. <laughs> the pilot has heard a funny noise from the engine that he doesn't like. Oh, says the man. So you're waiting for an engineer to come and fix the problem? No, says the stewardess. We're waiting for another pilot who can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh dear, they're getting I, When somebody calls you gay, say, I'm straighter than the pole your mom dances on. <laughs> wow. Anyway. <laughs> like I told you, I have to print some of these up because <laughs> <laughs> they're starting to get good. <laughs> they're starting to get good. And we do have a direct submission today. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, there will right. be, yeah, there will be no purple ball of destiny or the no, no purple ball of destiny, no socky. Socky oh. was going to join us. Sorry, socky. Yes, no, were... Oh, oh socky can still join in. Oh, socky, you can still join. So in. Socky was just going to dive in, get the category, and go because he's got he's he's got a date tonight with a fellow. Well, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but uh, whether it's his mates, a club, with a fellow, <laughs> a fellow sock. Oh, no, well, a, a socky, a socket. Well, you can keep Saki around. I thought that you were actually going to bring out the owl, honestly. To tell you the truth. Well, owl's, owl's definitely going to give an opinion on this next track, but uh, Saki, I can't even remember how Saki, I don't even, Saki knows how Saki speaks anymore. It's been such a long time, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think I was speaking like this, wasn't I? <laughs> sort of, yeah. 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 Good exactly. luck. Goodbye. I don't remember if that was Saki. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't remember Saki. if that was Saki or Reggie. <laughs> Bye, Saki. Sorry. Oh, Reggie had a bit more of um southern accent. Oh, he? Reggie's got the, yeah, a bit more going on. He? He's, he's, so uh, I would imagine that Saki does have a companion somewhere since Sock's coming past. Well, that's true, actually. Isn't it? <laughs> that was probably the funniest joke of the night so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That rum liqueur is not bad. I'm going to use my um, jigger. Use your jigger. Shall I try a single to start with? Just oh, no, absolutely not. It's absolutely. Not. Not. It's not a jigger. Straight from that. Double. What's that? You should go straight from that. A jigger. <clears throat> jigger was something you agitated it with. I thought that was a jigger. Oh, you've gone all slow. I'll have to reset my thing. Uh, is that well? It was called a jigger on the actual um, packaging. No, oh, jigger was something you agitated cocktails with. I think I better reset my thing because Rob's just um, basically he's in slow motion, and then all of a sudden, after he said all about the agitating and the jigger, he's just started going. <laughs> well, no, well, yeah. <laughs> Well, he usually does that, but that that is that might be because I'm speaking. That is that is called the jigger. What you what you have there? Yeah, yeah, jigger. That is called the jigger. Yes. 
I mean, what a great name. Jigging in the rigging. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, some of these things actually cost like hundreds of dollars. I'm just going to go and come back again. Sure. Back soon. <laughs> Fucking twat. <laughs> what a bunder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Oh boy! The expletives we got off just in that time that you were out. Really? So. Well, <laughs> right, I'm going to pour it and see if I can do a proper. See if I could work in a bar. Oh, I'm going to do it right to the top as well. There we are. Look. Go on. You, neck it, you, neck it. I'll, I'll tell you what. Right. I'd be so tempted now. Going to put it in the glass. Yay! Look at that. How perfectly done. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Now I'm going to do some fizzy pop. Oh no! I'll tell you what, let's let's put the lid on now. Yeah, I've got to be so careful with everything. I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, Scott was saying, yeah, you need to be careful with everything. Yeah. Scotty G was saying I do everything oh. too fast, and that might. Oh, core. Is he just talking about personal experience with you? <laughs> yeah, that might be just the problem, though. I mean, because everything I was pouring out the cream soda drink that we had just. Chucking it in, but that's just kind of how I normally do it. But I do have a lot of spillages, so maybe that is why, <laughs> that is why. And you know, I know my dad said, you know, I mean, my mum used to say I was like a whirlwind when I was living there. After getting divorced, I sort of moved back into the mum and dad's. So I was just whooshing around, and my dad was always saying, "Slow down." He's from London. Slow down, and um, so uh, maybe that is the thing. Maybe I should just slow down a bit. Or maybe your name was Dan and not Charles. Could be. Slow Dan. Slow <laughs> Dan. Like, oh, are Dan. either are either of you whiskey enthusiasts? I like whiskey. I like a single malt and stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here, check this out. Ah, Scott Scott. No way. Did that get sent by Scotty G? No, 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 no. No. Because he's got a bottle at work. I didn't even know if you had this, but if you, it's a sheepdog, it's a peanut butter flavored whiskey. He let me have a sniff of it earlier and the whiskey. I, I tasted it like, like kind of like, you know, tip of my uh, to tongue. And it actually tasted kind of good because I don't drink hard liquor. I can't, I can't do hard liquor at all. But, uh, but it tasted kind of good. And it's kind of like kind of an interesting concept because, you know, I like the taste yeah. of peanut butter. I hate the taste of whiskey. <laughs> but when you combine the two, that smells so good though. That yeah, stuff. It, it smells. It smells fantastic. He was going to give me a spoonful it's, earlier, but he didn't. Even it's now. a great porn name to be fair as well. Hard liquor. And <laughs> 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 cheap dog. <laughs> cheap dog. Oh, cheap really? dog. Hard liquor is not quite <laughs> where I was going with that. <laughs> I think. Hold on. I think I might like peanut butter. Dab of this. <laughs> Just, well. Just on the tip of my pinky. He's tucking in. I forgot my pint glass. It's downstairs. So now I'm drinking out the bottle, which is pretty Ooh. manly, to be fair. It is manly. What have you got mm. there then? It's a stout, is it? it looks like a stout. Ruby Ale? Ot mm. Otter Ale. Otter Ale. Made by yeah. otters. That's all right. I had the colder ale earlier, and now I've gone on to the otter, the otter Ale. ale. Yeah. It's a bit otter and spicier. <laughs> boom, boom. No <laughs> joke books involved in my jokes. No, you didn't have to look that one up at all or anything. It just so come out natural. Natural. After just three days of thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, or or th or three beers of thinking about it. So <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. that is true. <laughs> one or the one or the other, the jokes are gonna start flowing. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, <laughs> one more and I'll be doing that freedom thing I was talking like about they're, they're, without they're, my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> this, is like really, this is like really heavy caramel, isn't it? Oh, do you know what that's that smelt so lovely? I really want some of that stuff. So and it's weird that Scott e. G got it as well because yeah, he's just he's been raving about it. He had some over the weekend. Oh no, this, this is just a, a buddy of mine left this over. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I like I haven't touched it since since he was here probably about like like three months ago, honestly. How oh, big is uh, that bottle that looks huge. It is it is um let's see, 750. 750, yeah. Yeah. So, so what is it about your camera? I think it's your tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have tiny hands. <laughs> that looks can. like a 1.5 liter bottle like right this. Yes, yeah, so as <laughs> soon as you open up a bag of worms, and now we're just going to be talking about my hands constantly. What the fuck? 
There's, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of caramel in this fucking thing. And it's it's difficult to hold without like kind of like fucking like gloves on, like winter gloves. <laughs> for fuck's sake, this thing is cold. It's been sitting in the freezer for three months. But peanut butter whiskey, whiskey, whiskey with and caramel color. So it's 35% alcohol by volume. Yeah. 70 proof uh, contents is 750 milliliters. And it actually tastes good, man. Like, yeah, it's nice like, stuff. Yeah, no, if I if, if I was if I was a whiskey guy and I drank this, I would totally be a fucking alcoholic. <laughs> so tell me, you have drunk that like chilled, then have you? Me? Yeah. No, I've 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 dipped like the the tip of my pinky in a cap and just kind of like dabbed <laughs> it on my tongue. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I think I'll be drinking yeah. from it. <laughs> I, oh. uh, no, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, I, 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 I dab my tongue just that way. I could get the taste of it, but you know, nothing beyond that. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's pinky and ball sack in it, but if you, if you <laughs> just tea bagged it a bit. I no, I, I don't do, I, I don't do well with hard liquor because uh, even if, <laughs> even if it's vodka, man. Even if, even if it's vodka, eventually I'll just end up fucking like throwing up all over the fucking place. I just can't mm. do it. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things <laughs> as I'm opening up that you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do, I don't, just don't do booze at all. <laughs> <laughs> hard liquor. Hard liquor is what we're talking about here. So, yeah. Our, um, That's so your our, name. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing Susie said. I remember now. Sorry, it's just you reminded me of it. <laughs> <laughs> the hard liquor. No, it's about the wideness, my wideness. So it just, just, <laughs> it just works. So, <laughs> but I'm yeah, quite a wide person. So she said you couldn't even, even if you slimmed down, you'd still be wide. So, but I do need. To slim <laughs> and down. that was the compliment. <laughs> 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 good as it gets. <laughs> oh, well, no, it works. You know, it kind of works. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know where the British humor cuts off and, and the actual insults or, or compliments. <laughs> like, so, yeah, you, you guys had just gotten married. <laughs> we have just got married. Yeah, but she, she sees and it as she, it's, she, it's, it's an okay said, thing to be white. So she said, even if you slim down, you'd still be white. <laughs> and at that point, you went in for a cuddle. And you went, oh, thanks, love. Well, it's like we were talking. Your face is that good. So, so, how tall are you? You're five. You're five nine. Five nine. Five nine. How tall is Susie? She's about five five. Five five. Five five. five. It's a good. It's a good height. Yes. Yeah, I mean, she might. No, sorry. She might even be five four or five four and a half. Yeah. Something like that. She's around there. Hmm. But you know, it's nice, nice having a little height difference. But it's more the uh, yeah. I mean, it's like a no, no, I, I was just saying. I was just saying it's a good, it's a good like kind of like man to woman ratio. It's kind of like you know four inches difference, five inches difference. <laughs> There's about four or five inches difference. But, between yeah, inches. Yeah. <laughs> maybe more. Maybe more. Depends how it goes. Yeah, I think so. Maybe four. less. Four. <laughs> yeah, three four <laughs> inches difference. Maybe more. Maybe <laughs> less. But you know. <laughs> it dep depends on which way you're talking about. You just said that yourself, so you know. Depends how much she insults me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might get off on it. Now we were talking about work, and it was one of the girls at work was was talking about what's hot, what's not, and she was saying, yeah, she likes um, um, a dad bod, something she can cuddle, you know, kind of thing, and uh, and spoon up to at night. So um, yeah, there are advantages in being a <clears throat> bit bigger. At the time and being warm and cuddly, so you know it's it's not a bad thing. I would say. I'd rather be warm and cuddly than yeah, thin, spindly, and cold. golden baby like a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like to be kind of like right in between. It's just yeah, uh, I like having a little bit of meat on me, but I'd also <laughs> like to see my penis in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. I think we should cut that crop that comment. <laughs> I'd like to have a bit of meat on it. My... <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh dear. I did say my. Ah, your meat. <laughs> you like your own meat on you. <laughs> no, I say I would like to see it, so you know. Oh. 
<laughs> Did we not get that portion? Oh, <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Is this thing on or what's going on here? Everything just dropped then, didn't it? Did it? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I do know what you mean. Yeah, there's there's an in-between, isn't there? So having a yeah, just just I think I need to sneak down is the point. <laughs> Let's, here's the thing is if you if you're if you're in the shower and and you're washing your nether regions <laughs> but you can't see exactly what you're washing probably time to slim down a little bit if yeah you, that's right yeah, if, was, you can, yeah. if you can see what you're washing then you know you're good i gotta say as far as as, as far as a guy is concerned yeah i mean you might have to bend a little bit <laughs> but i well, think no, uh, no the, the, you shouldn't have to no well, you know you shouldn't have to bend that's, that's i think the only time that really starts to become problematic is when you've gone into the shower with a few other guys and you realize you're watching someone else's <laughs> ball sack. <laughs> oh, you've been to prison before. <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> That's not mine. Who's this? <laughs> right. This shows to the birdie song. <laughs> Skiing to the birdie song. <laughs> Oh, dear. oh, this show is totally flying <laughs> off the rails. I don't remember getting circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, so a guy says to his girlfriend, I want to give myself to you. The woman responds with, sorry, I don't accept cheap gifts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the music here. Let's get back to our direct submission here. Mm -hmm. DZ. DZ is an Australian hip-hop artist from Sydney, writing and recording music through independent record label Trip Jacket Mafia. Uh, having worked with international artists such as The Game, Horseshoe Gang, Ritz, and Chris Coleco, DZ has proven himself to be a top contender in the Australian music scene since 2018. Actually, I read that wrong. DZ has proven himself to be a top contender in the Australian music scene. Since 2018, DZ has been dropping a steady stream of music and has built an impressive catalog spelled the uh british way with a mm -hmm. u between the g and the e here so the name of this song is just want to party just want to party who doesn't for fuck's sake right <laughs> <laughs> it's all we're doing on this show here it's just, that's all we're doing is we're partying my man <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah just partying by dz let's Check it out. <laughs> Playing at the moment, Tom. I think I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> we can hear it. He's gone, isn't he? Yeah, yeah maybe he's gone to the toilet. Mm. Just wants to no, pass. No, no, no. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Seriously. So you guys can't hear that? No, nothing's playing. I, I, I turn I turn on my monitors to go pee, obviously, but is it because it's Spotify? I think it might we've be. played Spotify before, haven't we? Or have we not? We have, but everything changes day to day. What about have they got have they got been on like... the peanut butter liquor again? <laughs> you had your fingers back in there. No, it's because it's like fucking caramel it's sticky shit, man. <sighs> <laughs> He's gonna be pissed in a minute. Be like, <laughs> oh, I am the stickiest caramel. I wanted to go wash my because I, I, I wanted to go wash my hands, and this is just like fucking annoying. So these um, we like to party right that was the name of the we want a party <clears throat> is, it, is it on youtube <laughs> right, well, that's, 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 that's what i'm that's what i'm looking for that's what i'm looking for so 
you guys you, you guys chat here okay as i'm looking this up because i check it, this, check this, check is, this, is, this is obviously a pay submission because uh free submissions are you know first come first served and i'm thinking about doing a separate show for the um for this free submissions so that way we can be uh just want a party just want a party german jokes of course i've got a joke if you want it um i'm not sure if it, it is often said that germans have no sense of humor but how could anyone say such things of the nation which came up with the following ridiculous yesterday i met my friend horst at the hospital he'd swallowed a sponge he says it doesn't hurt but he's always thirsty <laughs> wow that, that's the joke that's the joke wow that's incredible what would you do if the world was about to end go to east friesland everything happens 50 years later there oh that's a sort of very localized german joke there oh sure yeah. i think i might stop those german jokes are you ready tom <laughs> just stop just here yeah, just stop in general because like seriously treatment. I know <laughs> A man walks into a bar with a crocodile under one arm and a chicken under the other. I'll have a beer, says the man. And a cider for me, says the crocodile. Well, the barman says, is that a talking crocodile? No, says the man. The chicken's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's lost. You forgot the beginning bit where there was a chicken under one arm. No, yeah, no, no, no. I, I was following the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't wasn't the best. It's the first one I could find up mm. in such short notice. It's, it's the same thing. Like like the guy walks into a uh, bar carrying a duck under his arm, and the yeah. bartender says, "It's like, oh my god, what are you doing with that pig?" And he's like, "No, this is a duck, not a pig." And he was like, "I was talking to the duck." <laughs> 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 It works. Uh, it works. It works the same way. That's better than mine. That's better than mine. Yeah, yours was shit. I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, well, I wouldn't say mine. I mean, it came from a shitty joke book. I mean, obviously, if I wrote my own joke book, it'd be hilarious. Oh, well, as, far, as far as this program is con program is concerned, then you know, you telling jokes, they're yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to take responsibility for your actions, man. As see, and, Car and Car Charles even put his book away because he's like, okay, so, <laughs> yeah. I'm, not really, I'll stop the I'm not accepting responsibility for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, here we go. So this is what it is. Just want a party by DZ. Check it out. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> There's nothing. I'm coming there's back no again. <laughs> yeah, there's no sound. <laughs> we just want to party. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. Drink coffee and jelly. Shut up, man. That's my version of it. How very dare you? You seriously can't hear that? No. no don't know why it's not playing. Oh my god! Uh, YouTube's a bit hit and miss, isn't it? Sometimes it's just the vocals that play. Sometimes, no, you know, you know, a lot, a lot has changed just within this last week. Oh, seriously, a lot has changed just within this last week, uh, as far as the uh, social media stuff is concerned. Um, I've recently learned, well, not that I've, not that I've learned, but. We had a problem with people taking our stuff down, uh, you know, on uh, Spotify. Spotify was was taking our stuff down. And then later on, it was kind of like, uh, you know, this, this email came through or this notification came through, or whatever the case it was, was that we had listener support. So if we had listener support, we weren't allowed to use licensed music, right? So that's why that kind of stuff was taken down. So they turned off the listener support automatically. And then... 
I kind of like turned on the listener support again, but then it kind of like said the same thing. So I just turned it off. I'm like, if this is going to prohibit us from using licensed music, then we'll never post a goddamn show because everything is <laughs> copyrighted, you know, um, anything that we do. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a five minute timer going on this thing. Let me get YouTube back up here. Where's right. That was a loud clap from such tiny hands. <laughs> Shut up. I'm actually going, okay. Just, just, just for that, I'm going to get a 10 minute timer going. Oh, five, 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 just enough to do. No, 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 no. Cause I, I, I want to go smoke a cigarette too. So, so we'll get a 10 minute timer going here. Um, yeah, my, for a break. No ads. my hands aren't sticky enough to get that nice slap. Yes, we, we, we just got back from break and we had a nice hour long conversation. No, that really it would be better if that helps. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, these shows are too long. They're a hard listen if it's on Spotify, if it's just the. Well, that was interesting. I mean, I, I, I used to listen back more when it was more visual and it was YouTube and it was edited. I don't so much now. So every now and then I might listen to YouTube. We can. Well, we'll, we'll probably we'll probably not talk about this later because once we're done with the show, you know, you you guys definitely you guys will be you know tired because of you know five hour time difference and everything like that. But um, tomorrow or you know Sunday or whatever before the next show, I'd like to chat with you guys about something because I have. Um, you know, now that, you know, this has changed and this has changed, but obviously, you know, we want to keep the show going and, you know, um, we, I, I would just like to discuss the idea that I had with you because I'm bringing back the idea of kind of like, um, like doing the, um, edited show uploaded to YouTube without the description. However, that would just lead to the websites because the websites we would post the last three shows of the underground sound the video version of it right and there in the descriptions i can list everything or you could do the admin you know and i'll just copy and paste your admin onto there so we would in in essence have um youtube spotify and the website but what i would be doing is instead of pointing the advertising towards uh towards youtube is i would put, be putting the advertising towards the um towards the website yeah. because i'm doing minimal advertising right now towards the website and honestly for i mean for crying out loud for <laughs> the, the the last year like within the last two three four shows i've gotten three paid submissions mm. um <clears throat> As opposed to the last three weeks, where three weeks have been, you know, pay submissions. Yeah, that's probably there. the way. Yeah, I just I I have to think of something because because I know I know that what's going on with Spotify and YouTube and everything is like they just don't want to pay. They you know they want they they want to keep their money. Like why are we going to split this? We're, we're going to constantly make this more difficult for you to become a partner, to have a partnership with us, so that way we actually have to give you a check, right? Yeah. So we have to rely on ourselves. So if we're going to rely on ourselves, well, let's just rely on our fucking website in that case. So let's do the live show. Then what? Yeah, okay. Trim out the live show, and I'll upload <clears throat> it as an edited version on YouTube, and I'll upload it as an edited version on um, on uh, Spotify. And then what I'll do is I'll also have the edited versions. The last three or four shows we can do a month at a time, for example, right? on the uh, on the home page where where people could watch it because because the radio has gone the radio has gone because the licenses are gone that's all it's period point blank the stuff that we talked about before is i'm not renewing the licenses because i can't justify the cost yeah right? because everybody like from the left and from the right is just is just seriously kind of like criminalizing us mm -hmm. and, we're not, and we're not criminals you know so that's what I'm thinking there is, is, okay. is we just need to kind of like, you know, focus on the website. So uh, anyway, here we go. So compose email to Charles. I was waiting while we're having a break. We're breaking now kind of thing, are we? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do, we're going to do 10 minutes here just so. Okay. So, enough, interesting. Uh, enough time to enough time to listen to the song enough time to we enough time to refill and then we'll be we'll be back right so okay yeah. um, so here we go so link direct 
Link DS is what it says. So link direct submission. And that is <clears throat> and I shall pull up now the it's gonna be a window. Where the hell is the timer at? So when you guys talk to the camera, you got cameras right in the middle of your screen or something. Oh yeah, I'll show you that in a second. Well, I'll sort of show you that. Then I can my, show you. My camera's like kind of like off towards the, kind of like the uh, the right side of my secondary monitor here. I'll show you in a minute. But I'll go wee wee. I'm bursting. I'm going to wet myself. Well, yeah. Well, let's go then. <laughs> I will tell you though, it's more or less in the middle.
All right. Okay, so that was uh, DZ with uh, we we want a party. Am I am I correct on that? Because I got a little bit of a uh, I think it was just want a party, wasn't it? Just want a party. Just or was it? We just want a party. I think it's just want a party. Let me let me make sure because I had to close out that I had to close out the uh, the, 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 the tab because it was. Um, so that was uh, DZ with. Uh, we want a party. Who's got their speakers on? Oh, I've got the sound back on. That's us 20 seconds ago. Just want a party. Just want a party by DZ right there. So, uh, Smart Monkey, what'd you think, man? Yeah. You have to turn on your mic, but, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Oh, what's going on here? Why is my... Oh, everything's gone a bit manic. Right, back in the room. Yeah, I mean, I was quite liking the stylings of this, the um, intro and the musical elements of it, because we've often said about, like, kind of these um, sort of hip-hop songs that some just lack a little bit of an element of musicality. Is that a word? Musicality? Yes, I'd like to say it's musicality. Um and this in, you know, straight away from the outgoes, it's it, outgoing is it's got this kind of uh, nice feel to it that the the music's been selected quite well. So, I mean, for me, I, I I kind of yeah, I didn't mind this. I thought it was quite good compared to some of the other stuff that we've um, had to listen to. And you know, if I was to put it in the context of the show tonight, you know, obviously we've had some pretty strong contenders on this show. Um, is it up there to contend with it? I would say no, but then it's a very personal thing because I'm, you know, hip hop music is quite, um, it either hits with me or it doesn't. And although this is all right, this is okay. Yeah. It's, it's got some strong contenders tonight. I'm afraid. And Charles. Well, I think, um, very much the same as smart monkey actually on this one because you know this is one of the stronger um direct submissions that we've had uh With musical was, stylings yes musical stylings because it's got uh, i've i've sort of put that there's plenty of detail in the production and there is i mean you've got that sort of a lot of contemporary production styles and and choices such as the muffled start coming into that blurry sound coming into focus and same with the outro so there's context there you know this it's been thought through there's structure there um you know lots of low sub bass sort of sounds and a little bit of gated effect in there so it's contemporary in many ways quite a clubby track one that could be played quite loud in a car on a saturday night on the way to a club with some young uns going out for the night um and the stereo effects and sounds are moving around quite nicely they've got that sort of hip-hop street uk rap style going on um i think it's a fair collaboration because you've got d dz or dz um m16r and holloway or you know, separate artists i think featured on there and um collaborating well i think yeah it sounds like a really cohesive song uh, yes, it probably won't make my top three or shout out, but it's it's not bad. You know, it's not it's not, certainly not the worst song we've heard. Nah, as far as yeah, I mean, mm. not because some can be like you know really, yeah, they can jar with us. But this one, I didn't feel was was anything too bad like that. Um, yeah, that's I mean, always what I worry about sometimes. Just yeah. lyrically, I'm like, oh. yeah, but not. You know, it, uh, considering it's not really my kind of music, I didn't mind it. I didn't didn't dislike it either. You know, so I sort of slightly enjoyed it. You know, so uh, I think it's not bad, and it's certainly within its field. Uh, you know, there's people that will will latch onto it and like it. I think. Well, kind of like a uh, kind of like a mishmash between um, you know between hip hop and kind of like a like dance electronic or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, so. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. It's not a horrible song, not a memorable song mm. um, by any stretch of the imagination, honestly, to tell you the truth. Uh, 
I feel like the verse vocals were kind of muffled. I it's think so, deliberately so, though. Could have been deliberate. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't know. I don't know that the um, that the that the uh, the audience like if if you if you're trying to make the song like get onto the radio and everything like that. I don't know that the audience would would uh, would accept it. Um, however, I could be wrong. Once again, um, I've been. I've been um, kind of like watching Judd Judy quite a bit and just kind of like background noise and everything like that. Right. And I didn't know this, but judges that are, that are kind of uh, older, you know, like, uh, so Judd Judy is like 81 <laughs> years old right now. Right? right. What she needs is she needs a social media liaison. Right. So you say hearing aid. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe aside from that fact as as well right but the judges these days that they need a social media li uh, liaison there to kind of like uh, guide them through so if somebody shows them like text messages or emails or like they hop on instagram you know to provide evidence to the court and everything like that they need a younger um the social media liaison to kind of like tell them like well this is this and this is this and this is this i need one of them <laughs> No, no shit. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm saying, man. <laughs> you know, it is. It is not a surprise because because you know these um these these websites and these um you know these apps these social media platforms are like light years beyond my my understanding and everything like that. You know, so I would like to have that kind of person right there telling me like like this is this and this is this. So I hear. I, I hear new words or new abbreviations like nearly kind of like every other day it almost seems like right so you have this owo and lol and this that the other lmao and it's just kind of like what does this mean what does this mean what does this mean what does this mean i can only i can only imagine being like an 81 year old person especially somebody that needs to enforce the law you know and looking at lmao for the first time in my life <laughs> you know what i mean and just kind of like, yeah, well, you need you need younger people around to to kind of like explain to you what this stuff is. So this is what's going on for me here is that the song itself, I think, is very cleverly done. It's a very nice mixture between uh, between hip hop and and uh, and dance. And no doubt, I have no doubt in my mind that this would kind of like have the club going, you know, but um again with the uh with, with the verse vocals just kind of like being muffled and everything like that that didn't really kind of like sit with me very well uh yeah. but i mean it it is what it is it's still made for you know for a uh for a pretty decent song and so the production on this would be again the only gripe that i would have with it would be the fact that the that the vocals needs some more work as far as the integration of them you know goes into the song it's really that i can all that's really all that i could think about with this one so this is obviously uh we can't do it on the live stream here but this will obviously be does somebody raise their hand no i scratched my oh okay. brow. i'm sorry i thought you raised your hand and you wanted to say something else so yeah, I just uh, yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just just uh, about to scratch my other bro. <laughs> wow, <yeah. laughs> now you're just disrupting the show. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. I'm not raising my hand. I just got cramped. I just stop raising my hand. These are like right. people. Probably. Oh, actually, oh, I was yeah. just counting my fingers. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's okay. It's nothing. It's just the light yeah. blinding my eyes. From... <laughs> it's a little too bright in front of my face. Okay. <laughs> Keep on going, yeah. <laughs> and back to you. Over well, to you, why Tom. Big board, Tom? <laughs> why, why are you pausing so long? Come on, get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> why the big pause? I would say, but you've got such tiny hands. I can't say that. <laughs> 
There you go. I do not have tiny hands. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be so paranoid tonight. He's going to be measuring them up. And just every <laughs> random person on the street going, do you mind if I measure your hands? Man? <laughs> yeah, just as I thought. About average. <laughs> no, I've, I've already measured before just because uh, I heard a rumor at one time that that from the it's just going. <laughs> you know where this is going? Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. apparently, from the crease of your wrist to the uh, to the tip of your middle finger, that's where your penis is. That's where my penis is. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> from mine's down there for some reason. <laughs> What the? What's uh, the matter with me? I'll never reach. I, I'll never reach. <laughs> I meant, I meant the length. <laughs> oh, sorry. God, I thought it was a bit abnormal. Then. No, yeah. I called you meant the length and not the girth. <laughs> no, the, the same, the same way as I say, from the, uh, from the, from the uh, crease of your wrist to the, uh, to the uh, bottom of your elbow here. That's how big. That's how big your foot actually is. Apparently so. Oh, you yeah. can say it's your penis. Oh, I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. It's not hard proof. It's not hard evidence, but you know. He's quite acrobatic, <laughs> isn't he? Oh. Can I get my foot up? <laughs> That's not bad. It's quite good flexibility. You can't, to... you can't do it with your shoe on, man. Well, I can get it to there. That's a good I... point. Oh, that is a really good point. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> About the same, yeah. What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder. Back in our service. Did I fall? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, oh, that I, was, I may have, and that's a good thing. That was one of the X smelly feet. Is that a group? <laughs> the X and the smelly feet, yes. <laughs> the X. <laughs> Me seeing a smelly feet. <laughs> I want to make that band now. We've done mm. this before, haven't we? We've come up with a great band name. The X. The X is a good name. Good, mm. good name. Yeah. With oh, lead no. vocalist, smelly feet. Smelly feet, dirty fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, Rob, or not. But uh, I recently, I recently bought a um, bought a uh, uh, guitar to start like replaying my uh, Guitar Hero games and everything like that. Oh, yeah. And I forgot that the band name that I had come up with back in like, you know, like what's it, like two thousand seven or everything like that, <laughs> was Part Time Monkey. <laughs> oh my God! See, destiny. <laughs> Yeah, but, see, uh, but see, I'm just I'm just a part time monkey though. Yeah. Subsequently, on the other Guitar Hero game, <laughs> my band name was Monkey Talent Agency. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> There's something going on there. Yeah. yeah. It was it was kind of funny. I don't know if I, I I don't know what I had going on with monkeys at the time. Mm. Don't worry too much into that. Spanking them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a little worried now. <laughs> Bit of an obsession with monkeys. <laughs> and now at last I've found you, smart monkey. I love you. Oh little monkey. It's fucking serendipity, man. I'm telling it you. It is, it is. Nick Fields with Angel in the Sky. <laughs> what do we got going on here, Charles? Mm, Nick Fields, that's spelled with N-I-K, uh, is from Kassel in Germany. So we're back to Germany. He's a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, influences include Johnny Cash, Simon and Garfunkel, Bob Dylan, which you may hear in the tracks, as well as people like Jack Nietzsche, who you don't hear see on there very often as an influence. Jackson C. Frank, Blues Run the Game is a very good song of his. Uh, Leonard Cohen and others. Now, what have people said about this? It's a single that was released um, December uh, time. Uh, a couple of comments. Right. Let's choose carefully because we're only now two now. So I'm going to go for this one. Egypt says, OK, uh, which isn't really a worthwhile comment. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> pick. 
Kate Angel. Well, you know, it's hard to choose now. Uh, Kate Angel had a comment. I won't read it out, but she's been featured on the show. And Andrew Wincher says that's freaking beautiful, which I kind of agree with. Yes. Okay. There are better comments, but you know. there certainly are. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm only now to do now, and I've got to be short. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the first two comments that are, that appear is it's okay and decent so you know we can go by that yeah. or we can go by the comment that he actually replied to which is clean love the acoustic could hear this in a movie or wow great song like with the heart emoji so you know yeah i don't know you know, it's just more work for Carl as well. Carl, Charles is what <laughs> there's no criticism aimed in that at all, <laughs> but there were some maybe better comments with replies and hearts against them. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, okay. <laughs> Although, I've got to say, when you do actually take time to comment properly, because he said, Man, you totally made my day. And I commented, so it was really nice because it's worthwhile. Then you know they they yeah appreciate that you've listened. Already, I really already told you you're limited to two comments now. This is going to be a, <laughs> this is going to be a three hour show. That wasn't a <laughs> comment; that was a reply. That was a <laughs> no, that's to read your own comment now. Oh my god, you've done your two. Shut the hell up! Here we go. <laughs> Angel no, was up. by Nick Fields. Let's check it out. Yeah. I was gonna say now I'm missing both of you. <laughs> oh, there you go. There. I'm here. There's Carl. There's 
Charles, there's Charles. I gotta keep see. I gotta move this thing again here. I don't know why, but you guys keep keep jumping positions every time we do this. So I gotta move. <laughs> we did it on purpose. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> my little. Am I on top and then he's on bottom? And no, then, you're, you're, like when you nuts, look, he's on bottom. Side by side, on, side by side, top. side by side. That's the same we thing. Keep, I, I have to keep running over to Cornwall, and Rob keeps running over over to Kent, and we keep swapping over. It takes. <laughs> we should do that, really. We should, we should like. <laughs> so our room would be next door, just <laughs> mix it up a bit. Tom would be like, "Oh, <laughs> the fact is going on here, man." <laughs> so there we go. Uh, Nick feels angel in the sky. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. Who do I choose? Who do I choose? Oh, what's something? Carl's got something in his hands. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. Oh, he's got his pecker in his hands. He's got his pecker out. He does. I'll call a pecker, yeah. yeah. He's got his pecker out. All right. So then, in that case, since Carl has his pecker out, so oh. Carl. <laughs> you can wait if you want me to. Wait, no, wait. no we don't want to keep that because we know how difficult it is to get that pecker. Yeah, let's get and it. Keep, it up. Up. Yeah. Let's let's keep it up. Yeah, keep it up. Oh, 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 Right, well, I, I'd say, um, yeah, it's, it's a good sort of seven and a half, eight of ebb, pecker of ebb and flow, you know, so it's a good squad. But also, I think this deserves the uh -oh. super snail of Songcraft. <laughs> so <laughs> that snail there is <laughs> actually, if I hold him just over my eyes, <laughs> hey, hold on, what? <laughs> this snail was, was what? Super snail of Songcraft, because that's where pretty... your eyes again. <laughs> Super snail of Songcraft oh, over my eyes, yeah. Yeah, so go on, go on. Just, oh, oh, his eyes have moved. Let's just move him closer. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, but weird now. <laughs> Oh my the God. Super Snail of Songcraft. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think that one, the, this first the time newest, I've used it. The newest addition to our underground sound family here. So. I'm sitting there, I just I don't want know to be used. what it is, but I just got the word twat in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Super twat. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine <laughs> why. No, I can't think why. Uh, but my comments go as follows. So basically, from the intro, from the get go, anyone with a decent taste, a half decent taste of music will know that this is a good song. Oh, uh, right. That's, you know, leading us in then. If we say exactly. it would be... <laughs> Objection. <laughs> Objection. Leading and speculation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, allegedly, anybody with a half decent taste of music will know that this is a good song. Um, that's your so, thing. <laughs> it's it's a, a very you know, solid retro production. Memorable chorus, um, the music is sort of dreamy sound. Yeah, so there's a sort of bit of ah, we always sort of cite Pink Floyd, but there's a bit of that to it. But also the vocals, uh, you know, are sort of there's something reminiscent of the Doors and Jim Morrison in there, the way he delivers them with panache, really. I'd say <laughs> it's not easy for me to say. Uh, the sounds are varied in there. It's it's a for a three minute song. It's pretty epic. And I love the title of the album it's from. It's Paul Jazz, P-O-O-L Jazz, Paul Jazz. So, so cool. And there's a good song on there. I think it's called Pizza Hands as well. It's, uh, um, you know, I just really like the sound of this song. It's my kind of music. Love it. Pizza Hands? Pizza Hands, yes. Pizza Hands? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he comes up with some cool titles. Hmm. Smart monkey. Well, yeah, I've got to say that I, I really enjoyed this. So I've, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's been about two, three listens that I've had of this track, and again, it's another one that the more you listen to it, the more it just grows on you. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's go from the start. You know, straight away you've got these very deep vocals that remind me very much of Nick Cave. Mm. slightly Leonard Cohen in there and then as it progresses I mean it, it you know those higher vocals and certainly the more shouty style of this vocal just conveys loads of emotion so to be able to go from this sort of deep element that that is emotive in its own right to this higher octave element I'm loving this straight away um so when we talk about ebb and flow you know 
Nick is managing to keep this ebb and flow going purely because of the way that he can sort of screen these vocals out at certain points. And, and it just has this real emotional undertone to it as he's doing that. Um, to me, the track gets better as it progresses because that becomes more prominent as it goes along. But again, coming back to the ebb and flow, there's a point where he just pulls it all back and it's all stripped right back again and then bang in comes in that emotional sort of um like scream vocal again and i love that i really love that so you know because of that element it really does lend itself to tv to cinema um mm -hmm. it's got a very cinematic feel about it um could do with a little bit of polish in places i'm not going to lie the track could do with a little bit of polish and I think underlying all of this, the thing that Nick needs to do is, is to realise that he's seriously talented, because I do believe that he is. And so just, you know, give himself that little bit more polish on the production. Go out, get some decent covers to your single, because everything looks amateur. And yet what he's doing isn't. It mm. certainly isn't. So he needs to sort of understand that what he's got is, is a really talented gift that, you know, ultimately I could see on TV, film, movies, and he needs to no longer go under this umbrella. I mean, Tom, you pulled up the single cover there a moment ago, and it just doesn't do it justice. You know, he needs to give it that bit of shine and polish because he's a silly, seriously talented artist, to be honest. I absolutely agree. So, were you watching Charles as I was, as as you were giving your your speech there? No, I wasn't actually. Sorry. No, not you. I'm not asking you. I'm I'm asking Rob. Oh, <laughs> you are Charles, by the way. Yes, I'm Charles. But yeah. you said, were you watching Charles? Or no, do you mean, no, was no, I watching no, Charles? I was watching no, Charles. I'm asking Rob. Is it? No, because he was like sitting there with his drink. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on. I think he poured it all over. Yeah. No, no, I did it. I did it very. He carefully. Think? He said he was like, <laughs> I did it very carefully, and then just went just quickly to make sure it went in without spilling it. And I did. I and did a very good job. I like it. I like my jigger. Have you done the single measure jigger on that? I've been doing single measures all night. Just yes, being thing of the 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 the, uh, the, the thing of a jigger, right? Is thing of a jigger. Oh, yeah. I would just add quickly before you have your comments, Tom, is yeah. that. The artwork on the album, it's it's uh, the, the the cover artwork is. I get what Rob's saying, although I think it might be alluding to sort of those uh, late sixties, early seventies covers that used to look like that. And no, um, I don't no. think it needs this. Prob probably not, but it's got that old sound. So I think he's aiming for that. But I don't think it has. I think this is mm. really quite contemporary in its sound. Yes, yeah. I know it harks back to artists of yes. that era. But it has its own contemporary sound that is very relevant now. I think it's a seriously good artist that could really stand his ground at the moment and do some really good stuff, especially for film series. Well, Peaky Blinders. Absolutely. A great I mean, song for Peaky Blinders. Loads of emotion coming through this. Loads. Let's just, uh, let's just take a let's just take a look at this artwork again over here. So let me uh, bring up the screen, and then we'll talk about this a little bit more. Because I got to tell you that this is that this is um um okay. Can I go now, Carl? Yes, please, oh, Carl. So I'm sorry because I didn't I, I didn't move my piece of paper where you are now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, can I go now? Yes, you can. Yeah, Thanks. please do. <laughs> so I, I had at the very beginning, I had a very nice Nirvana feel about this. Uh, so they, they were very uh, kind of like Kurt Cobain, uh, you know, very uh, style guitars and everything like that. And I was like really, really kind of like digging this. So even if we just think about that without the rest of my commentary, um, then this album artwork just doesn't do it justice. This is something that was kind of like, um, you know, I, I don't want to speculate, but if I'm going to speculate, then I'm going to think that this is probably something that, you know, Nick thought of himself. And, and it's just kind of like, uh, you know, uh, if he's a musician, then obviously he's not going to be a good graphic artist, you know, but he might be both. He might be both. Who the hell knows? You know what I mean? But um, I got to think that whoever gave this idea for this, uh, for this, uh, for this graphic is just not, uh, 
not keen on what the uh, on what the music is actually uh, you know pertaining to. Because what I would do is I would go and I would take Nick out into some fields or something like that and just kind of like do some black and white photos because the the second part <laughs> that it kind of like reminded me of was um was everlast if you remember everlast was a part of uh was a part of uh the house of pain back in the 90s but then in the 2000s or, or late 90s late 90s early 2000s maybe i just I, i'd have to get the uh, dates correct in my head but everlast released uh whitey ford sings the blues with a very popular song which is what it's like uh, I think that's probably the most memorable song off of that album. And then you really might know what it's like, what it's like, you know, and this seems to me like this is kind of like a mixed type of music right there and everything like that. So it's very enjoyable. It's a very, um, it's very poignant. Um, and then if we go beyond that, then we're talking about Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. He definitely has a Nick Cave type voice. Definitely you. Nick Cave type voice. So I'm just trying to, to draw up different comparisons, of, you know, from the obvious. Uh, so Nick Cave and the Bad Sea is so whether you think of, you know, Angel in the Sky or whether you think of Red Right Hand, these kind of like seem to go uh, hand in hand to each, to each other. Definitely. And absolutely. I think that the, you know, both of the songs are obviously fantastic. Um, you know, especially Nick Cave's uh, Red Right Hand, which once again is Nick Cave and the Bad Seas, which, which is the name of the band that, that played there. So I didn't know. Did Nick Cave actually play an instrument? Just out of curiosity. Do you know, Carl? You probably know. I don't know if he does. I, I assume it's guitar or something. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to decipher of, of if he was just a uh, or if he was just a singer, if he was just a vocalist, or if he actually played an instrument. Because it happens a lot. I mean, you know, you have a four yeah. piece, you have like a five piece band. So you have like, a, you know, you have a singer, then you have a lead guitar, then you have a rhythm guitar, and you have the uh, the, the bass, and then you have the drums, right? So I'm just I'm just kind of curious on that. But in either case, it doesn't diminish the fact that that you know uh, he has like Nick Cave style style uh, vocals. That's why I mentioned Nick Cave and, and the Bad Seeds is just because I'm trying just trying to think of the um, of the band. So so absolutely not. This isn't lost on anything like you know Peaky Blinders or anything of the sort this is this absolutely fits right in there except for where i heard the kind of like um like kind of like heavy kind of like a slide guitar solo that was going on and everything like that right so that would be the only thing that would be a miss to um to the uh to the peaky blinders uh you know style but in the very beginning if you go back and and, and listen to it it um it almost sounds like they're about to do like nirvana's like um let's just say the man who sold the world, for example, you know, and they really switch into this uh, blues kind of feel, which is the everlast, uh, you know, Whitey Ford sings the blues. That's where I started to think about that. But ultimately, obviously we're, we're dealing with, we're dealing with a little bit of country and we're dealing with a bit of lyrical or lyrical stylings that would be very comparable to, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to Johnny Cash or to Bob Dylan or to, uh, or, or once again, Nick Cave. So I think this song was very well done. Uh, didn't find many flaws in the production. I mean, I very, very much enjoyed the production and the execution of this entire song. Yep. Yeah, me for I, I felt a little bit of polish on this, but you know what? what a little bit, a little bit, just a tiny bit. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, it, yeah, it's, I, it's not missing much. It's not missing much. What I think Nick needs to understand is, I, I think Nick is one of those um, artists that, you know, they're very passionate about what they do. They know their way around music and the emotion that they're creating there. But I don't think they understand potentially how good their music is. And it reflects itself in like the album cover. They're not sort of necessarily realizing or they don't take that too seriously because I don't think perhaps that they, they feel their music is is that is going to reach that 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 audience. And I'm like, nah, the, you know, you really now need to up yourself that next level, take it seriously, get some decent artwork. Artwork on the on the single cover is arguably the easiest part oddly enough especially but, this but, day and age oh, and then yeah. oh, just give it that little bit of polish on the on the um production as well you know really do yourself some justice because this is 
this is good stuff really is we the album artwork especially these days in this day and age the album artwork is probably one of the most important things that you need to do yeah because you need to attract somebody visually yeah i agree with that if you don't attract somebody visually then that's going to be a problem um separately also i have to say that i think that um that you know that any band i don't know if we ever talked about it in this analogy or not maybe i've mentioned it before maybe i haven't but when we talk about any band there has to be a leader there has to be a captain so whether you're talking about you know a football team whether you're talking about you know a hockey team whether you're talking about you know um a, a rugby team whether you're talking about a band there has to be a leader there has to be somebody that that kind of like everybody elects to be like okay you need to tell us what we're going to do from here you know what i mean and i think that and i think that 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 there there may be a major lack of communication with, with a lot of people because i think that nick can go places yeah i do definitely i, I really do yeah. Yeah. i really really do and the whole thing is is that if there's if there's a bit of synchronicity and that people actually start to um agree on kind of like what they need to do and where they need to go then um you know they they will definitely go places i'm not lost i'm not lost at all not one bit on uh your comments carl charles where you talked about uh jim morrison um because it does have a doorsy kind of vibe to it it's just to me it it has more of like that nick cave and everlast feel to it because it feels a bit more modern to me than the doors does because the doors we can definitely pinpoint back to the 70s you know what i mean we can definitely pinpoint them back to the 60s we can definitely pinpoint them back to that era where it was like beatles doors and i mean they're all great bands and the, you know there's no issue with them whatsoever but i do think that that uh what nick feels nick feels i do think that nick has um you know a more contemporary feel to him and i do and this is one of those songs that we talk about is i like it recorded and i would love to hear this live hmm. yeah be good live yeah i agree i've sent you a couple of links to album covers just just to say yeah where i feel like it might be referenced a little bit i felt like i was going to get an essay from you and then i pass on you and you're like mm. i agree <laughs> is, is that I like to him live i think i think it'd be good live you know yeah. he's 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 definitely got talent and he's definitely got promise and i think you're right 100 uh with you know just needs a tiny bit of refinement and polish yeah, here and polish. there because he's got he's got bags of talent so you know, i swear that probably yes doesn't realize it I, I reckon he's one of those artists that's just sort of gone you know maybe i'm okay i don't know and he's just pushed it out there he hasn't really like understood just how good his music actually is and hopefully people like us will go yeah you need to just that would be push yourself. That, that would be one of the biggest problems too wouldn't it is just self-criticism right because self-criticism like uh we talked about it before it's just like if i listen Absolutely. to my if i listen to my previous music then i i think it's shit you know what i mean it's just like oh man i could have done this and i could have done that and i try to rectify it on my on my uh newer music but my newer music also when i go back and listen to it now and i was like oh man you know like why didn't i add reverb over here you know it's just you know and and, and everybody i think as an artist is so self-critical of them absolutely and everything like that and, and and so and so maybe nick has that kind of like uh same little flaw but nick you got talent, brother. Yeah, definitely. Seriously. Seriously. There's three guys here that are saying and and you know what? The other the other issue of being like an uh, like an artist that's struggling to get out there is that you often you, you know, you take comments from your friends and family, and of course they're all gonna be going, Oh yeah, it's fantastic, it's fantastic. And you sort yeah. of you you kind of go, Oh, thank you very much, and and you really don't absorb it in a proper way that then pushes you um and i've said it before that one of the biggest things that happened to me was i met you guys on the underground sound and i was this just person who was bubbling away not really taking myself too seriously 
and then it takes someone else outside that friends and family circle to go whoa you know your music really resonates with me and it's really good and then that's all you need to just push yourself that little bit further and that definitely happened for me with you guys well it's like um, because i because you know like you said you know fr uh, friends and family are always going to tell you the same thing absolutely like your mom's not going to come up to you and say well this song it's kind of rubbish isn't it <laughs> And most most mm. artists know that, so they don't take themselves too seriously, and they don't promote themselves, and they don't invest in that next step because deep inside they're going, yeah, that's my mum, my dad, my family. Of course, they're going to say that, and it needs like people like ourselves who are totally uh, outside of this circle to go, man, this is a really really good song, really emotive, could be on TV. Yes, definitely need to push yourself and so if nothing else i think you know this is this is the underground sound here this is what we're about we are about sort of going man you really need to push yourself because you you could go a long way absolutely absolutely uh so so nick we've talked about this uh on the show before and it's just like fine polishing and things that need to be done to make this you know um a, a commercial hit not that i don't think they have a commercial hit right now because i personally I, I personally very much love the song and uh and so before the second half started i i said i said on track number four that you know we may as well end the song now or, or i'm sorry we may as well end the show now and now i'm glad that we actually kept the show going Absolutely. Obviously, we were going to in the first place but i'm glad that i heard your song I'm glad that I heard your song and and you have you have much talent but as we mentioned here before is um work with if you're capable to do so work with somebody proper I'm not saying you know give up your life savings and you know find a musical engineer that you're going to be working with and everything like that or a sound engineer for that matter that you're going to be working with but but talk with somebody that can really that has experience in the business and that can really just give you some really solid advice on what to do next because you've got a lot going on yeah. if 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 you've been if it, you you've seriously just been compared to pink floyd jim morrison everlast nirvana nick cave you got shit going on for you man yeah take that with a big smile on your face go talk with somebody pro and say what can I do with this song that can yeah. just make it that much better? They may tell you, well, hire fucking Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin is like the god of fucking producers. You know what I mean? I'm anywhere from the Beastie Boys to Jay Z to fucking you know to to to, to P Diddy to Eminem. Uh, Rick Rubin has worked with like everybody, so he is like the king of producers you know so if somebody gave me that advice i probably would dump my entire life savings and everything like that into into going that if this is what you feel if this is if this is your passion if if music is the way that you could so disclaimer this is like use your own judgment <laughs> i'm just saying what i would do personally because i think that the song is a hit even on a smaller budget honestly yeah. nick could you know he needs to just realize he needs to take himself a bit serious because i think he is a serious talent he could, go, yeah. he could do yeah. really well for himself Pop he could land himself a good sync deal and, and that would make him oh yeah. absolutely oh man the the, uh, the first sync deal that you have imagine uh, imagine the person that just came up with that bow 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 for breaking bad for example it's just it's like three chords and there's like a couple of uh you know a couple of a couple of um what do you call it toms and everything like that right just imagine that person that just came up with that man and now breaking bad is absolutely you know it's syndicated all over it's on netflix mm. it's everywhere and uh, you know and you get residual income off that for the uh for, you know for the rest of your life <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> just just think about that nick honestly love your music Thank you for uh, for uploading this song, and I said that 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 was spectacular. That was one of the that was one of the better songs that we have heard tonight. 
and that was one of the better songs that we've heard throughout the uh, throughout the year, honestly, because mm. what we talked about it last week, uh, where we were kind of like thinking, like, what are the standout songs? And here we are talking about a song for another twenty minutes, right? So mm. there we go. This is going to be I O Silver or Aloe Silver. Uh, we think it's Allo Silver. Hello, Silver. We said on the We Love Rock and Roll show, we featured this one already on the We Love Rock and Roll show. Um, and Hello, Silver is from Coca-Cola in Suomi in Finland. So we've been mm, all over the place tonight. Canada, USA, Finland, Germany. Um, influences include uh, David Bowie, Foo Fighters, The Black Keys, The White Stripes, Queens of the Stone Age, Stevie Wonder, Harry Styles, quite a mix of things but mostly rock based the song itself bridges between says i don't listen to nearly enough rock and roll well come and listen to the show bridges between um <clears throat> this kind of stuff is so rocking lol this is a great track uh which it is and other most of the comments revolve around great song and stuff like that really damn this is really good and he had to throw a third one in there, didn't you? <laughs> and your birdie says, ha ha, nice. I was counting for you. I said one, two, and then you <laughs> out. Built to Belch, who had earlier, says, fiery. <laughs> Here we go. I O silver away. Modern day slavery. <laughs> Hot title for the song. So. Hopefully it'll live up to the uh, to the reputation here. Um, as our track closer. Oh God, I had a good pun intended here, but I totally forgot it was. What's to do with Allo Silver or modern day slavery? <laughs> yeah, it could be a good pun after modern day slavery. You, you got to be no. careful there. <laughs> never, mind. never mind. We're just going on with the song. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> All right, sorry. Was there any sound there? That is my no. that is my bad. I had to I had to go pee so bad that you know oh. I, I ran out of here without. Yeah, I had to as well. I hope we could get back before the end of the song. So 
you know. <laughs> well, then, I, then I wonder what was going on. Yeah, well, we have to start the song all over again. So here we go. Let's check it out. <laughs> Right, that was our final track of the evening. So you know that you're getting fat when you say that you're fat and your friends don't correct you. Smart monkey, <laughs> it's about true, isn't it? That is. Uh, what was that? Smart monkey, what? Take what? it away, smart monkey, monkey on the fat bastard. Did you say? No, I said take away the review of the song. Uh, I told a joke, and now you review the song. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> I love the fact this is our last track because we do have this this tendency to start with a a big track and end with a big track, and this ended perfectly for me. Um. So what am I getting from this one? I am getting massive influences of Led Zeppelin. I'm getting, oddly enough, vocal delivery reminded me so much of Red Hot Chili Peppers as well. So you've got a little blend of um, sort of 70s, 80s going into 90s. And then the whole track to me has a relevance even now. It's just nicely produced 
nicely vocalized that it has its own relevance even now so you know this is one of those tracks that takes all the elements of past artists and brings it forwards and i think you know that is a solid band going on there um production to me sounded pretty damn good to be honest it's punching it out there the power is in that track and that's what this one's all about it's solid rock track um i gotta be honest it's, uh, it's just these last few tracks are throwing a few curveballs in the mix because we had it all made on the first half and then these ones they're throwing a bit of a curveball at the end i don't know if we've had it. well i didn't have it all made you know in the first half that's for sure but carl let me ask you a question hmm. since you're a connoisseur of liquors here so cognac is kind a... of sewer <laughs> kind of sewer of liquor no i said connoisseur oh sorry <laughs> fuck's sake cognac is a fine brandy made from the juice of which fruit Oh, um, I think he's crying. Yeah, I think I've heard this before. Yeah. I, know, I know gin's the juniper slice. I'm gonna say apricot, mm. pineapple. Is it really pineapple? Yes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not is it it's coconut it's coconut, coconut. <laughs> is it really coconut <laughs> <laughs> they're similar though they are similar to be fair let, let them off exotic yes exotic well they both go on trees there they're, they're tropical they're exotic right so yeah yeah so <laughs> I think pineapple may have been to the to the answer to the question that I didn't want to ask. <laughs> That's the biggest thing I've ever shoved up my ass. Have you really shoved the pineapple up your ass? All right, so here you go. Here, 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 one that you're gonna know because you're 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 pretty good geography too. So, which city was the capital of New Zealand until it was replaced by Wellington? Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> because I didn't know that a Wellington boot. It's got to be emu, isn't it? Because emu is a boot as well. <laughs> Bird. Um, Pine pineapple. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's New Guinea is what it is. See, it ain't bad, was it? I said emu. And Guinea's a bird too. That's true. Guinea fowl, yeah. Auckland, basically, uh, so New Guinea. So there we go. Uh, in in the uh, in the uh, native <laughs> native language there, which is English. So. <laughs> <laughs> like he played the memory flute right at the end. Oh, that pen looks. <laughs> that pen looks huge. <laughs> <laughs> take it take it away charles <laughs> take it away charles right okay so yeah riff, it's a riff based track that hooks you in straight away it really does it's a distinctive riff um simple riff but it's 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 a sort of jimmy page-esque type of riff that you'd get from led zeppelin hence as rob said the led zeppelin overtones but also a little bit of robert plant in the delivery that said there are elements of Things like ocean color scene from the 90s, white stripes from the noughties, and uh, you know, elements of all these things are seeping in. And as you say, red hot chili peppers as well. Uh, lots of stop and starting in there and ebb and flow uh, to a degree. Um, but really, I, I think, you know, not so much ebb and flow, but the, the stop moments and start is all centered around the drums, which 
you know, with if they're programmed, then they've got great fills, uh, drum fills, um, and you know, triplets. I nearly, I thought I'd written Tourette's on the hi hat. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's triplets on the hi hat. Yeah, little simple, say simple, subtle little things that, that, that have been put in there. They're really good, or played in there. Uh, but um, but yeah, I, I I love it. I really like it. It's, um, he keeps pumping out these really rocking tracks and he's he's done quite a few good ones and i've already bought what, three or four of his uh on itunes and we're featuring two or three four on um the wheel of rock and roll show gradually over the next few weeks so it's but for me the bit i really like it most of all a bit like led zeppelin sort of feel to it is that it's got that sort of tambourine the rhythm ch 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 insistent sort of funky rhythm there's a groove there's a real groove in this song and that's what a lot of songs seem to lack at the moment is, mm. is uh, that really strong groove. It's not just a, a feel or a vibe or anything like that. It's the you know the rhythm, but it's, it's the groove. Yeah. This is this is full of it. It's got a bit of funkiness to it. So um, this is a definite via for um, you know this is this is a top three song for me. I don't know where it's going to land just quite yet, but I shall. I'm almost there. I'm almost there with my. Oh, you're singing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there with my top three and shout out. In fact, I'm I'm pretty almost made up. <clears throat> well, lit quite made up. I I pretty much <laughs> am. So, um, did you guys feature this one on any of the uh, We Love Rock and Roll shows? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, we did. Which one was that? I nearly said, as per my opening comments. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. No, no, we did. It was the, um, it was probably volume nine, I think, this one. Wait a minute. So, so, was, so that, was, that was not the ACDC special. Volume nine was an ACDC special. Was it really? So we had eight and nine. Eight and nine were the uh, ACDC specials. Uh, seven and nine. <laughs> Seven, eight, it sounds nine, like a bit pedantic. 10, 11. <laughs> it was seven and nine, annoyingly. It's seven, yeah. We were going to have the ACDC special in episode 14, 15, but it got accelerated forward, cunningly by Scott, I think. Okay. So here's what I got out this one, man. The, uh, the, the kind of like the heavy guitar off here reminded me a bit of a, a, a little bit of a Zach Wild kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously i'm picking up on the red hot chili peppers vibe to this but then i would the reason i was asking was was this on an acdc special or, or on the uh, we love rock and roll because i thought that was on the acdc special because uh it definitely um kind of like reminds me of a little bit of acdc you know and then kind of like moving forward it kind of like reminds me of a little bit of uh you know some of the black crows also so it definitely has this kind of like um you know, like 80s 90s tinge to it and everything like that so the production quality is good i have an issue again with this is like i don't know if it's just the way that i'm hearing it out of my cans today or not but i have a problem with the um with the way the lyrics are flowing they seem kind of kind of like like not where they're supposed to be it's not that they're not there you you can hear them it just kind of like seems like uh they're kind of like maybe um under emphasized at this point you know they seem they seem very low which is a problem that i had with with uh with some of your music if you if you recall us talking about that earlier on when we had met is that i told you you know like raise your voice in some of your songs because you can barely hear yeah, because no, because you can barely hear what you're saying, and so this is this is my issue with this song. Is the same issue that I had with you, is that uh, you know, kind of like uh, you know, raise your vocals because you really can't make out what you're saying. So even though it has that kind of feel to it, and it's just kind of like uh, like I said with the uh, with the Zach Wild guitar, because there's there's a couple of power chords in there, and there's a couple of riffs in there, and you know, you could definitely pick up on where the kind of like kind of like the rock metal influence is uh when you're you, you you know you're talking about this ultimately the vocals are are going to be kind of like the uh, the downplay for me and so the vocals definitely sound more like their sound garden more than more than anything else not that it's a bad thing 
Soundgarden's a great band. Love that <coughs> Black Hole Sun, um, you know, fell on Black Days, probably one of my favorite songs of all time. Definitely probably what probably within my top 10. So so I fell long. Going in and, mm, Black Days. Love that song. That song is absolutely just brilliant. Um, yeah, but I gotta think that with with all things intended is just kind of like uh bring the vocals forward. Tune everything down. Well, maybe not tune down tune everything down a little bit. Maybe just bring the vocals forward a little bit more. <coughs> And then I think that everything will kind of like um, everything will kind of like line up because otherwise I do feel that, um, you know, everything was on more or less of an even keel. So that would be my only beef with it. Definitely sounds like a 90s song. Definitely sounds like a 90s song. And I do appreciate that because I'm a child of the 90s. So I love that 90s music. So with having that 90s feel in it, it's all groovy. Liked it. Good job. It was volume nine, by the way, and we've also featured Alo Silver's Walk Away on volume 11. Walk away. Really? Walk away. Yeah, he's, he's pumping out some good songs. I had to do that. We had um, a young lad that um, worked for us and did a song called Walk Away. <laughs> Literally sang it like that. Walk away, walk <laughs> away. <laughs> That's beautiful. Was that when he was quitting? He got 400 listens from it, probably more than some of my tracks. <laughs> 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 uh, now you know what you need to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, here, we, we, we talked about your tracks before, and so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell everybody that, you know, if you're a fan of... Um, of kind of like drum and drum and bass up tempo kind of like uh electronica in 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 that kind of um in that kind of genre not that all of your stuff is like that but but a lot of your stuff does seem more drum and bass than than anything else so if you guys are into that then obviously check out smart monkey if you're into electronic in general just check out smart monkey if you're into the really cool really mellow really retro vibes like you know Here's the thing. I know this much about Charles. <laughs> Charles doesn't smoke weed. He doesn't take lewds. You know, he's not he's not into any drugs or anything like that. You know, but he play. But I do also know that he plays multiple instruments, and his <laughs> and his influences include the Beatles and and, and Led Zeppelin. And uh, you know, he's uh, much more of a ballad rocker than anything else. So if you like chill music that has that 60s, 70s tinge to it, then obviously check out Carlos Fandango. I'm not gonna call I'm, I'm not gonna call you Charles when I'm when I'm giving you props as your stage name. So do <laughs> check out Carlos Fandango. If you are into that type of music, do check out Smart Monkey if you are into the electronic type of music. So um, with that said, so we've given our reviews. We've had an entire show. We've drunk some beers and some wine and some champagne. 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 Yeah. That what? Champagne. I always call it champagne. Yeah, Champagne. Champagne. Yeah. <laughs> or Champagne. champagne. <laughs> if you just really want to say real quick, just some Champagne. You see, he just he, <laughs> he just started to take shots out of the jigger. Did you see that? Yeah, I might do that next. I've run out of um, what do you call it? Uh, mixing Coca solution. Mixers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mixing <laughs> solution. <laughs> Mix that sounds really dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> mixing <laughs> solution. You got any maths in the cupboard over there? <laughs> I'll just do a tiny bit. Mm. <laughs> oh, too I'll much. Too much <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm actually ready with my top. I like the fact that every last little drop in there has got to come out there. It's in that jigger, and you're like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this is the inside of the jigger right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not practice on something, you know. Like this, this is the one shot. This is the two, <laughs> two shot one. <laughs> oh my. Can you reach the back of the double? That's the that's the thing. No, I don't think I can actually. <laughs> Just start in single, you know, start early for yeah. those exercises. <laughs> Start early for those exercises Start and then work your way up <laughs> to the bigger one. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's good though. I like it. I like my jigger, my new jigger. He, he, he looked like he was going to start playing it like the trumpet for a second. So here we go. So I'm going to retire my Charles sticker. There it goes. So. Oh, yeah, I quite uh, like Charles. Can we not just yeah. ditch? Carlos Van Dyke, Charles, Charles Van Dyke. Dutch musician. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're, 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 we're coming to the end of the show, so I start, I start feeling that I should start calling him Carl or Carlos. I'm just yet again here, so <laughs> I can try to remember that for the next time. Charles, Charles Van Dyke. <laughs> have a good problem. He'll put his finger in it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <sighs> Fix it with me, Jigger. <laughs> All right. Carlos Van Dyke going his Jigger. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you have so many gaps in your teeth it looks like your tongue is in jail <laughs> that's a good one I like that. <laughs> that was a joke but you oh, it's it's up. Up. <laughs> it used to be quite gappy <laughs> you can't believe that you did that so personally that's horrible <laughs> Oh no, it was it, it was not an insult. <laughs> I'm just it to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if it sounded like a personal insult. <laughs> I'm a bit conscious about it now. That's your kind of problem. You're fat, you got a big ass. <laughs> and you can't see and your tongue's in jail. <laughs> you fucking jail. <laughs> Rob, oh my God. you are so ugly. The last time you got a piece of ass was when your hand slipped through the toilet paper. <laughs> oh, quite, I find that quite an erotic moment. <laughs> memorable. A surprisingly erotic moment. Realistic <laughs> too. This one's called Two Weeks to Live. A doctor tells a patient, I'm really sorry, but you've only got two weeks to live. Okay, says the man. Can I have the last week in July and the first week in August, please? <laughs> <That's brilliant>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're, you're starting to redeem yourself with your book there. Oh, good, good. That one is a good one. <laughs> My tongue uh, might be failed, but it still works. His spirit won't die. No. <laughs> I think all these jokes are going to make a comeback sooner or later. <laughs> Got to. Maybe not in the literal sense, but, you know, but in the spiritual sense of things. Nobody picked up on that. Okay, good. <laughs> so. so you ready for your top four, three shout out thing? Yeah, you've already got top four then. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Um, um. <laughs> you got top four, three. Four, yeah. Top three. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for a cigarette unless you both want to go oh, back okay. and then, then I can breeze through this. So I was just going to start a 10 minute timer here. All right. I'll go get a drink. There you go. See? All right. Now everybody's starting to be in agreement. See, so, you know, just started a little bit of a 10 minute timer. Bad, bad. Gives, gives everybody <laughs> a little bit of time to think. No, we're intoxicated. And... <laughs> yeah, even more so for the 10 minute timer, right? Just because we got a lot of beer in us and everything like that, and gives us a little bit. Of... Okay, yeah, I'm just going to shut up at this point. There we go. <laughs>
10 minutes timer. We'll be back with our top three, our shout out, and our good night. We'll be back right after this.
<laughs> why, why all of a sudden do you have long cords? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's handy. Well, I think it's handy. This cable's quite a long one because my work one, it's just a tiny short cable. It's ridiculous. So, uh, but this one, quite, I find it quite handy. It can be a bit awkward because I did trip over it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt that you did. <laughs> Just... Most of the time, it's quite handy having a longer cord because it means you can sort of move around the room a little bit more with the phone if you need to yeah. while you're charging it. Works that way sometimes. So here we are with our uh, shout out in our top threes. So uh, who would like to get this? Well, since Carl is looking for his uh, first cord, Smart Monkey, you take it away. Shout out top three. You might want <laughs> I just love the fact I was talking then and I had no sound on muted and I was doing a great little hark back to the Eurovision there. Hello, my oh. name is Smart Monkey. I'm here from the UK to represent the UK. My shout out is to Temple of the Martyrs. Bored me. Thank you. Did it? No. <laughs> no, no, it didn't bore me. It's the name of the track. It's called Bored Me. Uh, must have come across wrong in translation. Uh, I do apologize. But for our top three, I should give points away, shouldn't we? Like in Eurovision, we should go, yeah. Well, my 33 points go to. No, it's not because I couldn't do the maths. Um, so number three for me is Nick Angel. No, Nick Fields. <laughs> <laughs> Something in right there. Nick Fields. Angel in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Angel. Nick Angel. The sky fields. in the fields. Fields in the sky. <laughs> but, I mean, the more I listen to that track, the more I love it. And it just needs a little bit of polish, a little bit of confidence. And he could go so, so far. So all I want to do is just big up Nick here and go, you know, go for it, man. Because you've got serious talent. You really have. Yeah. Number two for me, and this was a bit of a difficult one because I was juggling these in my mind. But number two for me is serious with... Well, no, is Arteus with Sirius? It's getting <laughs> the right way around. You're not taking this seriously. I just love the kind of production values behind that track. I definitely need that first vocal stripped out to me. There was a point where I wasn't going to include this track for that one reason. I thought no, that's me being too pedantic because the rest of the track is perfect. It's a really good track. I definitely don't want that other vocal right at the start, but let's let's move on from that. And it still made my number two slot because it's still a solid track. Number one for me caught me right at the end. Allo Silver, Monday Slavery. Just a solid rock song that really grabbed me, grabbed me by the coonies at the end there and went, Woo! Did he say, did he say Monday Slavery? Modern day slavery. Modern day. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mind I like you, that would be a good Monday Monday slavery. That would be a good name for a track, wouldn't it? Monday slavery. I feel like that. But no, this is this. That was a solid rock track. It had so much going for it. Just pumped it out there and took all of those elements of a, of those influences, and yet still managed to make it relevant now and into its own contemporary kind of track for me. So. Yeah, that just nudged itself right at the top, right at the very end. Okay. So, uh, silver gets the gold for Rob. Mm -hmm. it looks like it. So, uh, so this is the last time I'll call you Charles. Uh, if, from from this point forward, you are Carlos Fanning. So, Charles, what <laughs> are your shout out in top threes? Why is Tom so quiet? Is it just me? It's a little bit quiet. 
Maybe he's got a tiny voice as well as a tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> little hands and a little voice. Tiny hands, tiny voice. You know how that goes. <laughs> oh, he's back. There he is. There he is. That's it. That's it. Good. Just had to rhyme him up a little bit. That's all. <laughs> uh, so my shout out goes to, because of the beautiful voice, Hillman Husky behind the microphone. I really think there's a lot of promise there. So, and I love the way she sings. Um, if I could have but, had two shout outs, she was there. She was right there on my screen, right there, but not allowed them. No, we're not strict. We're Tom's not strict. No. no I, I, so I, I would I, never even mention that she would be my second shout out because that would be breaking no. the rules. Well, that's no, right. It would be the same if I said Temple of the Martyrs bored me. That would be breaking the rules as the other shout out. But uh, <laughs> number, number three. Oh, it's tough. Keep it up. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so tough. So tough. But. Uh, uh, I've put number three, which could have been easily number two, even number one is is oh Artus Sirius. Could easily have been well, any one of these could be number one, honestly. Um, really like that track. I mean, it didn't grab me quite as much as Free Your Mind did. That really blew me away. That track. This one was almost up there with it, is is good, but taking on board Rob's critique i think that's quite an important interesting observation my number two oh this is so tough because i do really like both of these i'm going to go out of silver with my number two modern day slavery um because i that can easily be again with my number one because i love those kind of songs it's it's very zeppelin for me you know just just really liked this one this was the first of aloe silvers that i think i heard first that we featured on the we love rock and roll show so and yeah he's he's got a lot bags of talent my number one um was nick field so yes it could do with a bit of tiny bit of polish but i love the song and there's something about it that because it alludes to some of those artists i like you know so much and great artists and he has again bags of talent this is a bit of a standout song for me a uh, really good composition so um but as I say, any of those top three could have been number one. But Nick Nick Fields, really good job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my shout out shall go to uh, Temple of the Martyrs with Bored Me. <clears throat> That's going to be my shout out. So uh, my number three is going to be uh, Hillman Husky, uh, Sarah Tuff, um, with Behind the Microphone. I know, I, I, know I, I do know that I said microscope earlier. Uh, but yeah, behind the microphone, um, it seems like a kind of like a thought out track and just, you know, again, single mom doing her thing. Number two, number two, number two is going to be Nick Fields with Angel in the Sky. Um, great song, but it came in a little bit late uh, for me and, you know, listen to it again, just kind of like trying to get the gist of it. And so I think that I'm going to keep that at my number two. My number one is uh, going to be uh, Arthias with Sirius. Um, even with that little speck of kind of like flaw in the um, in the music, I, I still got to think that overall that, that would be the one that I would want to listen to um, over and over and over and over and over again. So uh, once again, folks, for our shout outs and our top threes the, these are just personal opinions don't take them to heart if you agree with us and you agree with us if you disagree with us then please do leave us some comments below let us know what your uh shout out in your top three would be in the uh, case of this show here uh we would very much love to hear back from you otherwise uh you know um do check out these artists and do add them to your own personal personal playlist um keep this indie dream alive for these artists and uh and i do thank you we thank you i should say for that matter for joining us on the underground sound this is going to be our 15th episode for our spotify recording uh i am djx tech with me as always is carlos fandango and smart monkey and together we are putting the us back into music so please do a like, subscribe, and share, and we'll find the music that you love to hear. And don't forget to click on the bell.
<laughs> so you can heart us, which means you like us on Spotify as well. <laughs> you, you could just see Carlos's face as I did that. He was like, guys, <laughs> not to follow that up. I was gonna say for the uh for the for the folks of you that do not have the non-visual, they 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 were playing the virtual violin there and everything like that. Obviously, Carlos Fanega with a brand new wedding ring on his finger. Oh, yeah. there we go. So uh, again, congratulations to Carlos Fandango and to Susie Fandango for that oh, matter. Yeah. <laughs> Susie <Yeah>. Fandango. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Charles, and no, the third party Charles. Yep, I just I had just retired Charles. So if you want That's to true. Yeah. Back, no. I hope he's retired now. Yeah, so it's a threesome then. <laughs> it looks that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Alter ego. So for Charles, oh. Robert, Thomas. Oh, you want to tell a joke? Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say there's one more, and it's entitled Eggs. A woman goes to the psychiatrist and says, Doctor, you've got to... <laughs> Sorry about that voice. Doctor, you've got to do something about my husband. He's gone mad and he thinks he's a chicken. A psychiatrist says, uh, oh dear, says the psychiatrist, how long has this been going on? Oh, about a year, says the woman. A year? Why didn't you bring him in sooner? Well, says the woman, he wasn't hurting anyone and to be honest, we needed the eggs. <laughs> 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 oh dear. <laughs> so we better say our goodbyes then, didn't we? <laughs> On that bombshell. Uh, we need oh, the oh, eggs. I'm trying I'm trying to look at the insulting jokes here. <laughs> <laughs> If you think nobody cares you're alive, try missing a car payment. <laughs> that is very true, or any payment for that matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> people, people do care if you're alive. So, uh, for, the, for this 15th edition, well, I mean, this is technically like this, you know, 70 some odd edition of the Underground Sound. Uh, so, we're jumping between YouTube, Spotify, and everything like that. But, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, do the chicken Like a praying mantis. Well, I apologize. I apologize for being animated. That's all I'm so to say. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for this uh, 15th edition of the recording for our uh, Spotify show. Uh, yeah. Probably once again, the 70 some odd something, um, you know, show for our, our YouTube channel. Although this is just a live recording. We'll bring back possibly the, um, the editor version soon. As well as different changes. But... We'll keep you up to date with those on our website. Usundergroundsound.com is where you would go for that. I'm going to update that more and more as we proceed forward. For tonight, though, April 5th in 2024, I am DJX. We already did this. So we're just saying good night at this point. Yes. Oh, yes, so, yes. Yeah. So good night. Good night. And uh, good night. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be ya. I nearly said that. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I was thinking the same thing. Stop streaming. Oh. oh. I was going to count the other fingers as well. <laughs>